listen to how they, how much money. What's up, everybody? <laughs> Welcome to the Kind of Funny Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Greg Miller, alongside the producer slash seducer Nick Scar Pino. I took our special guest to Ono oh Hawaiian Barbecue today. Yeah. And I ordered a soda, and they said, sir, I'm sorry, we only have large sodas. And I said, who the fuck do you think you're talking to? You're talking to Nick Scarpino, the smallest man on the couch. You saw it, and he sit on his leg, and you said, that's a great move to look taller, but you did <laughs> Now you're even smaller! <laughs> Get off your fucking leg. <laughs> Get off your leg. Why is the cup so big in your head? <laughs> Wait till please, please be excited if it stands on this screenshot. Oh. It's the cup three it times bigger. Guys, you two sizes you small. It looks like the Ant-Man's uh, CGI when he makes himself small in the school. <laughs> and you just see a little Paul Rudd running around. Okay. We're going we're gonna to see about 30 minutes into this podcast which one of us is taller on the couch. <laughs> Get off your foot. Your shoulder is like a foot shorter than Greg's shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> like this is on. I mean, like it's also not doing him any this favors. This is very comparable to when I watch cartoons with Ben in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> it's not doing you any favors, Nick. That the center. It's, of it's the couch. It's not you. You're digging into the center of the cushions. You're falling in between. You're them. a perfectly average sized small man, but it's just like <laughs> this is making you extra small. You know what I mean? Nick just shoots me a look. He's like, it's gonna be one of those. <laughs> yeah, it is. Nick. Uh, I don't like it. You know I'm what? gonna have a juvie. I've yeah. never done it. Yeah. I've never done this before, yeah. but I. Andy says, I'd like a cherry slushie. I hope you fucking choke on it. Daddy listens to Andy. <laughs> I hope you choke on it. Oh, that smell good. Yeah, it's, it's a little oh, cherry God, slushie. Let me know what you think. Yeah, but it's so <laughs> bad, isn't it? It's so bad. <laughs> oh, you do this. Oh! Yeah. No, hold on. No, yeah. No, what are you on. talking no, about? It starts horrible and finishes bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's a ride to get there, though. <sighs> you don't like yeah. that, really. I don't know yet. It feels like, it's like, remember when I bought those sweet tart ropes? And I took a bite and I said, oh, these are terrible. Nobody eat them. You mean nerds ropes? Or like sweet nah, they do sweet tart ropes now, too. Really? And I was like, I bought them on a, on a treat at a, at a Walgreens or whatever and had them at my desk. And I was like, everybody, come eat these. These are bad. And then I ate the whole package. No, I'm not going to come around on this. You'd really? Chris, wow. I know you're not. What, what Chris, is, Nanka, Chris, it's uh, cherry slushy flavor. It's, there's no sugar. Saying, but is this like, oh, it's an, is it an energy drink? It's the yeah. brand new one. Yeah, yeah but it's energy, by one of, it's an influencer. 100 drink. Thieves makes it. Yeah. There they are. That's what I had. Soft, chewy, sweet tart ropes. But Chris is about the energy drink life. If it wasn't zero calorie, I'd like this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, that's the thing. It's that artificial flavor yeah. at yeah. the end of it. It's yeah. Did you guys see that article? Like that. The article that the, the WHO <laughs> is about to... No, I'm serious. It's a serious thing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, Chuck Schumer filed a bill to go after Logan Paul's prime stuff or whatever. He wants the FDA to look into it. What? Really? Yeah. Oh, is that not what you're talking really? about? No. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah I've had prime, these before. Yeah. Every can of prime, Logan Paul's good. thing, it's like five times the amount of caffeine as a Coke. Fuck yeah, look at yeah, Paul. Schumer Wait, Schumer's pissed off about. Wait, he's doesn't going he make him. like a sports drink as well, though? I thought. Yeah, check how do you think out. they're so fast? The people playing it. So I'll tell you what I say with that. It's, my, you it's like I got acid in my mouth, but I feel like I'm talking fast. You know what I mean? I'm talking fast. <laughs> you're, putting, you're, putting talking a lot, fast. you're putting a lot of A's in your words, like an Italian. <laughs> oh, I'm a bit, like, I'm talking fast. <laughs> <laughs> you can't you trip it over your own. Hey words. Mario! <laughs> What's really funny about that is like I know. The prime energy drinks are really doing well with the youth. Yeah. And like different. my, a good friend of mine, her son was like, this little kid will not shut up about goddamn prime drinks. And she like posted a photo of her son, like with all this like prime he got for his like Christmas gift or some shit. And then I went like to the corner store blood. where I get my Zoas, the blue one that we, mm -hmm. you remember, we, we went to all the right, corner store and I was like, hey, mm -hmm. doesn't notice there's a missing spot there. Maybe there was a blue Zoa energy drink there. Maybe I got it yesterday. Mm -hmm. Anyway, the lady one time I was getting Zoa was like, you don't like Prime? Everybody's getting the Prime. Mm. The lady in the store told me that I was like, Is "She getting paid off by Big Prime?" No, and I and and I like I had to be like, "No, you know, I'm fine. I don't want that." And I was like, "It's because I don't like the creator." And I just started like talking about the <laughs> damn. Yeah, so yeah. Like, well, like, let's get to the weeds. He's a really this. good wrestler, but he, I mean, like <laughs> he's a great wrestler. A frog splash out of this world, but he just ripped off a lot of people like with crypto schemes and stuff. And like she's that. like, "Oh, okay." He's like, right. he's like <laughs> forty minutes, them all, throws them on the ground. Yeah. <laughs> that woman, <laughs> we'll never sell it here again. Yeah. That woman didn't think about you one second after you left. That store. I see she her every day. No, kept hawking primes. She's she gonna see you tomorrow. She's gonna be like this. You want those primes yet? You ready for those primes yet? <laughs> you you ready like to these primes? Game? You guys like these primes? <laughs> no, I was, was gonna that say. You that just burped. Yeah, it, was it feels like I'm inside Ono Hawaiian barbecue. <laughs> 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 so gross. Sorry. Oh, <laughs> oh, Trust me, I've had a burp or two. No, the W. I was gonna say the WHO. Uh, there was an article saying they're about to release a report on aspartame. Thing. Oh, like, no. it is, in well, fact, we already know that gives cancer rats. I know, but they're like, yeah, this is bad. You guys got to, we got to stop putting this stuff in drinks. I don't drink anything with it in it. 
I don't Neither think, do I. You know what I mean? It's not in Coke, right? I only have a can of Coke every so often. Coke, no, Coke's just good old high, high fructose corn syrup. Is it in You're CZ? It's very much in CZ, yeah. Very much in CZ? Yeah, aspartame is pretty much, it's probably in there too. You're saying like it's full-blown CZ then? Well, the, the, the common misconception about CZ, and even, even Dee didn't know this, she was like, no, no, CZ doesn't have aspartame in it. And I was like, no, nah, it does. And they were like, what? Is because, that the fake sugar? Yeah, it's yeah. basically the it's the, it's the most popular artificial sweetener. Yeah, it's disgusting. It's it's life. That's why we don't do it. That's yeah. why we don't fuck Cane with this. Cane sugar. Stuff. I'm, I'm gonna deal with the consequences of real yeah. sugar. I'm you you you're probably better off that way. Yeah. Because I drink so many diet cokes. My now I try to get off. Feel like that, but you know, hey. Well, your heart's gonna explode one good day. Time. There's but a lot. You won't, exactly. You know. yeah, we're here for good. Right, is it really good ever at the end? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Once yeah. you cross like 75, nobody's having a great time. Yeah, aspartame is in A long time ago, my best friend Cool Greg brought me this prime when I said, I saw Cody Rose drink it on Logan Paul's podcast, yeah. and I wanted to try it. And Cool Greg showed up the next day. He's like, here you go. And I let it sit there a good four months, but now I'm ready to try this room temperature. Oh, yeah. Prime. yeah. Prime, dude. All it's right. Do you think? Do you think that letting it sit in the, in, in the can makes it more or less potent? That was some smoke coming off that. Yeah, that thing's <laughs> fucking hot. Let's see what Logan Paul I think I, I heard a yell <laughs> come out of it. <laughs> that don't bring me back. It was a hot like smelling salt. It's horrible. It's a moth didn't come out. <laughs> How's it? How is it? It's better than the other one. No way. Yeah. Oh, fuck off. Those, dude. those, so the Jesus just tasted. haven't even tried it. It tastes way too hard. Mr. Fucking cancel culture. <laughs> you know what I mean? Let me try it. Cancel. You put the can in cancel culture. Holy shit, Nick. Really? Nick Scarpino's here. <laughs> You're too they're far all down there. I can't hear you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> He's talking. It's like fucking Gimli talking shit to Frodo. There you go. I appreciate he did like the. You didn't even know. I'm looking. Your, I'm looking. Oh goddamn, that's right. real good. Oh man. Oh fuck that. We got a problem. Oh, are you a prime boy? We got a problem. Are you a oh, prime man. boy? <laughs> Logan. Really Logan Paul is me. Also <laughs> WWE superstar. Send us a case of prime. Oh, now I know Andy already made a big statement about you. <laughs> Does that have sugar <laughs> in it? Uh, zero sugar according to the side of it. Ten calories. Two hundred milligrams of caffeine. This is Hogwarts Legacy all over again. You see what we, we got ha Andy in the streets talking shit about it. Like literally <laughs> about Logan Paul. <laughs> Just telling anyone who wants to listen. <laughs> Here, here's what I've always said. Here's what I've always said. Uh, I already myself, have a headache from it. To myself. Or from all of this. I don't know. <laughs> what I've what I've always said a is spike like of sugar. Oh, have I don't really need a zero That's calorie streaky. drink. I don't mind if you put thirty calories in there. To give me some of the sweetness, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. When I go to the movie theater, I do 80% Coke Zero, then I put a little bit of Coke at the end. Oh. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, I like that. <laughs> what? Fucking weirdo. Yeah, I like Just it. Come in. So Why are you making suicide? Because I like some of like the, <laughs> I like some of the sugar. <laughs> also, can we have a conversation about these little fucking bags of popcorn we'll you keep I'm bringing I'm just going to get a movies? can of Coke. But you know what I mean? Can you just tell me you don't want to share your popcorn what anymore? Pele drink. Can you just tell me that? No. The Be a man and no, break up with me. No, 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 no. You're misunderstanding the situation, Nick, okay? I need you to calm down and be rational with me. The last couple of bags of popcorn I've gotten. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> right? You you put some you got it. it tastes like a blue airhead. Yeah. 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 God damn, man. The last that couple of bags of just... popcorn I've gotten are tiny, tinier mm -hmm. because I was already, I'd eaten that day and I was like, I shouldn't even be getting popcorn right now, but I'm hungry anyway. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Cannonball! No, You're the only one who's not prime time? Come on. Sweet. Too sweet. You guys are watching primetime TV with us, bro. Try it. 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 It feels good. You can feel the blue in you. I'm good. <laughs> okay. Okay. Like Logan? You just don't want to eat the popcorn is what you're saying. No, I just, I, I, it's one of those situations where I'd, I'd just eaten and I feel less guilty if I buy a smaller bag. Because I know that, like, I shouldn't even be eating this bag. I'm full. Why am I getting this? So yeah. we just, I, I, I hear well, that. It's just, there's a, <laughs> we have a history now. You know, I'm watching a lot of suits, Andy. And really? so we have a nonverbal contract now that every time you and I go sit into movies, A, we're going to sit next to each other, and B, you're going to buy the popcorn and I'm going to eat some of it. So you have to tell me when you're going to break that contract so I can sue you in nonverbal court. Suit me? Tell, you, tell ever me see, I... you ever see those TikToks where the girls put the camera in their, their phone in their back pocket and then walk around to see how many people check out their asses or whatever? I feel like that's what's happening with Nick's peck right now. Cause he's got his phone set up, <laughs> like he's trying to, like, he's like, he's trying to catch someone in the act of something. Just like, what, right what are you trying to do? Is this right your body me. cam? Is Kevin making you wear this around the office? Can I be honest with you? Yeah. I just put, I tuck it in here because it kind of matches my sweatshirt. Oh, you wanted a little pop of color? Oh, like a pocket it's square. Like a suit. square. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. That's wow. good. That's good. He's learning. Yeah. Chris Anka gets. He's me trying so hard. He get a me. suit. <laughs> 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 just wear suits to work. I, I just heard. I just heard him earlier before the show started, and I heard him and Cool Greg having a private conversation, and I just overheard Nick say. Yeah, everybody's wearing suits now. 
<laughs> Draw and I just like, and I love that. Like, whenever Tim asks me, Andy, where are you at in Final Fantasy 16? I'm like, oh man, dude, the, this region, blah blah blah. But with Nick, his updates are everybody's got suits. <laughs> man, I'll tell you what, I'm knee deep in season five. It is popping off. Well, and, and I, I just need to clarify for the audience. Mm-hmm. A lot of people in the comments are like, "Fuck, all y'all watch your dumb shows. Who cares what Nick is watching?" It was only the thing. The reason I brought it up was because Nick was watching it as we were about to do a show. And I thought he was maybe doing show prep and like rewatching a movie to talk about an in review, but he was watching Suits instead. So that's what was so fun. It was just so out of place for me. You yeah, know what I mean? It, that you're so right. I've gotten so many people tweeting at me like talking shit about us talking shit. I'm like, like you're it, shit. You're wrong about what you think. Out we're here. Joking yeah. The bullies out here yeah. trying yeah. to defend yeah. themselves. I'm going to someone say, held, bullies. Someone held I'm, a mirror up to your face to show you what true trolls you are. <laughs> yeah, no. and then you are all like, no, it's not us. It's you. It's you. I don't care if he's watching. I don't care if he's watching on his lunch break or like you know whatever. That but it, like you do. It it no. It was They're the fact that suits. he was watching it as we were on set getting ready to do a show. I was. It was just like such a weird time to be. I feel like as I if was like finishing up my lunch break, <laughs> and it was three minutes left, and I'm like, I had to bring my laptop anyway because I have to read the plot because I do all the heavy lifting on all the interviews. Everyone knows this. Mm-hmm. Chris knows Come on, this. guys, you don't know. And I'm watching the rest of suits, and I quote, Andy goes, "What is this stupid fucking show you're watching?" <laughs> I'm I'm criticizing you not because you're watching it during your lunch break, but because it's a stupid show called Suits. That's why. Hey, we I set mean, up we set up some right. rat traps with pasta in it. Surprised you didn't get your Italian ass. I heard him say it. There I heard right. him he, say he, it. You know like, what I mean? The bullying know. you have to put up I'm with. I'm having right? a hard time following the rats. I'm sorry. I want to get in it. I want to go on the side. What is talking about? Are they big rat traps? How big are they? Why does it matter how big they are? I don't know. It's trying to catch an Italian. We're pretty big. Anyway, yeah. That was well, my, but again, no. Was I missed it. That was my whole issue. I get like, it. It's weird. It was a weird thing. It, it was, was a just, weird thing. it was the time that you were doing it. You know what I mean? For me, it was weird because it, the time you're talking about was the funniest, weirdest. But to me, that was like the punchline after like a one, two setup of me just casually walking by and seeing Nick more focused on his computer than I think I've ever seen him <laughs> with your earphones in, like watching. And I was like, <laughs> What could this possibly be? And you're watching like there's just no show that could have been funnier than <laughs> that's it, exactly way you. deep into it season whatever four of suits. I like, just don't like that we you know we make so much great content here that just dies on the vine that nobody pays attention to except Chris Anka of course super yeah. fan over here. But it's that idea that you just never hear it and see it reverberate back in your life. Like not two nights ago, Jen's in bed putting on lotion or whatever and i came in from the bathroom she's like so what's going on with nick in suits and i had to explain <laughs> this entire thing because of the suits movement that has been found here yeah. suits very much everyone's coming to my defense on twitter so i want to i want to thank everyone out there all, all of us suit the suit fan thank you guys for suiting up in my defense <laughs> 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 i appreciate you so much I mean, joey noel watching suits now yeah. she's back on the suits yeah gia very excited. He's getting nonsense. Very excited. Because of you, Nick. Revolution. Is it because of you or is it because Netflix is really good at bringing oh, it's re- well, Let's put it this way. I was, talk- a new life. I was talking to Blessing this morning and I was like, man, I'm thinking about watching Insecure. And Blessing's like, I just started watching it on Netflix. We all have HBO like Max, but none of it. I didn't watch it there. Now I'm like, it's on Netflix. Like, HBO I watch Max it. is what I like to refer to as destination on demand. I'm not turning on. I'm, I, I don't know. What do I want to watch tonight? I don't go, let's go to HBO Max and sort through past all the Superman sure. movies and this other thing. Sure. No, no, no. I'm going there because I want to watch something specific. I thought you then only looked at it for Superman movies. Like, that's your entire catalog. I was, I'll tell you what. I was texting Jack Quaid over the, the weekend when I, I was watching a show or whatever. A little flex there. Me no big deal. You know how I do it. Yeah. I texted you about the show, too. Shush. Hmm. Uh, but it was that idea that I got on there, right? Back. And so <laughs> the first thing, though, I'm like, Benny, it's time to watch uh, My Adventures with Superman, right? And so I sit little Benny down turn on the TV, and Benny's he's yelling for choo-choos. He wants to watch trains. I'm like, I want to watch the Superman thing. I open HBO Max. I'm logged out. I'm like, all right, cool. I can do it with my phone. Scan the thing. Logged out on my phone. I log in on the phone. Bad password. I abandon it. We watch trains. The next day I try it. Same thing. I forgot about it. The next day, I'm like, I finally get into HBO Max, and I put in Superman, and I'm like, is it not? Is it not on this? And I'm like, sur- sur- searching nothing. I'm like, okay, weird. And I, I my advent- I couldn't come up with it. Watch the free episode on YouTube. Okay. Then I had to come over, and then I found it. Sent Jack Quaid a thing. It was like four. You put in Superman. It's like the fourth page of results is where this actually is. Really? Yeah. yeah. Outrageous. I don't like that burying the show. The I show found is great. It just well, it was just on the like. What's new on That's Max? what I was hoping when it I went was, on there. The you would think the algorithm, if they were using an algorithm you on might, Max. You might have waited too many days, though, as a problem. You were too late to watch it. Mm. But it's you like, did it day I was, one, it was there. For well, that's insane that they give, you that, they, gave that much, they give you that real estate, and then it's gone. That's it, huh? Yeah. That's as much as they want to give it. Wait, yeah. what is Delma it? had like three weeks of prime placement. Yeah. Who did? 
Velma. Velma. Scooby Doo. On Max? Yeah. Well, that was on HBO Max. That was a different time. It was different. Max is a different time. It was right. a four time. times. Yeah. They're up there. They're looking for winners. All right. And they don't know what they got. They got a winner on their hand here with my adventures with Superman. But we'll get to that later. Because, of course, Chris Anka's here. Hello, Chris. Hi. You're, of course, comic book artist Chris Anka. Not anymore. You're, of course, well, you know, but you were. Okay. But, I mean, that, you don't take that away from you. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's moving on. Yeah. And that, you better. designed like 300 Spider Man mm -hmm. in, in, into the Spider Verse. No. Spider Man Beyond Across, the Spider Verse. No. Spider Verse 2. Across the Spider <laughs> Yeah, sure, whatever. It's all the same one. It's the same thing. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? There's Spider Man. Three different Spider -Man. movies. <laughs> it's confusing for me, you know? Why don't they just call it one, two, and three? That'd be easy. Phil Lord doesn't listen to the meetings. You're not pitching stuff over there. Marketing. I'm not in that to? meeting. I'm not. I'm not up. In, I'm not up there talking about the title of the movie. Sure. That'll forever affect how everyone talks about. Can it. I just tell you something too? With the self-deprecating -de attitude, you're never going to be in that meeting. Sure. All right. You got to dress for the job you want. I think you should wear a suit. There you go. See, that's it. We got back. I, 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 I knew what you wanted. I, I, I had to stop myself from saying it so Nick could get there. Of yeah. course. Of course. Yeah, 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 Thank yeah, you. Everyone. Now I was trying. I was reading the chat here. A lot yeah, of people. Nick's that kid in really Spanish class where it's like. They go around the class, and it's like everyone's turn. The teacher calls on him, like, can you read the next paragraph? And Nick's like, oh, fuck. <laughs> Suits. <laughs> yeah. Like, where were 100%. We at? <laughs> Dude, would it shock you to know that I was that kid in French class? First, I mean, I day, like of, first day of French that. class, right? Uh, freshman year, I guess, is when I had to take it in high school. We're going around the room, and I just don't understand what the fuck people are doing. Yeah. They're just responding and doing this very, and it got to me, and the teacher said whatever she said, and all I could come up was, back at you. <laughs> <laughs> and it got a big laugh from the, the teacher, right? And, but it wasn't Nailed like it, it wasn't Greg. It was before, you know. I'm Clark Kent here. I'm not Superman, right? I didn't mean to use my mm. powers of uh, being hilarious and awesome there. I wasn't trying to be trending gamer or, or trending French class kid. Uh, but I said it. I was embarrassed, but it, it went over fine. And I, but I still felt like an idiot. I have no idea what's going on. You know, the rest of the day goes by. Climb into Poe's parents' minivan. Poe's sister is driving because she was you know senior when we were freshmen or whatever. And she no sooner gets on the road. She's like, how was your first day of high school? And we're like, oh. And she's like, oh, are either of you in the French class with the back at you kid? You made waves. And I was like, yeah, I'm you. the back at you kid. <laughs> and it turned out she talked in every fucking class about yeah. it. <laughs> this is almost like Man of Steel when he accidentally saves the school bus and then repercussions. You Pete know. works at an IHOP. Maybe you should have let them drown. Every day know. Pete clocks into that IHOP. He's like, I wish I died in that bus. <laughs> <laughs> this job manages IHOP. So <laughs> how is this small town <laughs> IHOP worst. this crowded all the time? Yeah, it's like <laughs> the only restaurant. Restaurant. one restaurant. Yeah, yeah exactly. I have I to guess, stop too. fights daily. Here. When, you, uh, when you imagine Smallville, like when all those times you fantasize about going to Smallville, sure. Did you imagine that the the most popular restaurant at Smallville was IHOP? I didn't. No. Oh, I didn't. Odd that they put the IHOP in there, right? Yeah, well, you know. What do you think of like a mom and mom and pops diner? You would think so. Yeah, yeah but, you would but they're not help. giving licensing fees, man. That's fair. Yeah, exactly. yeah, how much do you think IHOP paid for that? A mil. Yeah. Couple mil. Yeah. Yeah, just throwing it out there. Smart. Let's let me put it this way. I think there's like three product placements like right after another. Yeah, there's a lot in there. <laughs> but Zack Snyder never pays for a pancake. That's how. That's how. You know what I mean? That's I'll tell you what. That headache just hit me. Yeah, right. Wow, it hit me right in the jaw. I gotta Holy. bounce it out with a coke. Well, so Holy the trick shit, is, you that's gotta, a lot. You gotta of drink more of it, and then you just you just Push keep through. going, and then you die. Oh, I think I just got lockjaw. Wow. Great. Get it on this fucking ship. Be affected. Yeah. No. 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 Get in this. Oh, no, dude. I'm good. Get prime, bro. Perhaps <laughs> <laughs> he's Forbes thirty under thirty, True. AKA. The second best baby blues in San Francisco. I'm. It's the baby blues. It's, it's the blue <laughs> raspberry. <laughs> Nick, what do we do? I can see your time. How do we come down? <laughs> oh my I'm god, the bad trip. <laughs> oh my god. This Holy is shit, Logan Paul. Maybe like back it off like two hundred milligrams. Whiskey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Three minutes later, we're like, oh man, I'm getting worse. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, he's the New York Times quoted at Tim Gettys. Let Tim host. I have something I want you guys to listen to real quick. Is that for Mario in review? Hot Shots Golf in review. Barbie in review. We're doing a one-off in a couple of weeks, and I'm really fucking excited. Oh, about you do I'm the plot, Nick about Scarpino, you know, I'm about Barbie. About Carter Harrell just sent me that, and I love it. Which one do you think you're going to like more, Barbie or Oppenheimer? I, yeah, Call like, it right now. Call it right now. I keep no, saying this. like, but I, the, 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 it's like, not what you think is better. Which one I, are you going to like? I keep saying this, and I, I am excited at the place that I'm at right now. I'm more trepidatious about Barbie than I want to be. On paper, Barbie's a Tim Gettys dream movie. Every single thing I've seen about this, I'm like, there's no way this is a good movie. And I hope that I'm fucking wrong. So I'm going Oppenheimer. Not at even this that point. conversation uh, that they that went really, really viral with uh, Ryan Gosling where he's talking about how his job is beach. I've been trying to stay away from too much. I'm it's just a, the, the two main trailers that I saw. Great I've been like, I don't know, but Greta, 
She's done no wrong. She watched so. their BuzzFeed interview with the puppies. Yeah, yeah, that was a good one. I saw a lot of clips. It's, it's just them vibing with puppies. Ryan's great. Who would have thought Ryan Gosling watches 90 Day Fiance? But he does. I would. Yeah, you would. Yeah. That's what you guess, yeah. Because yeah, she asked about jury he's duty. An odd, he's an odd vibe, man. Yeah? I have you met him? Have you run into him? No, I'm just looking for everything I'm watching with his press, press tour. He's just a very odd man, and I love it. I'll, so do you think you'll ever go back to comic books? You're just like you're, no. you're just throwing it out the window. You don't get to talk, Andy. <laughs> no, nobody cares. Yes, yeah. uh, drink some prime. I, I not really. I mean, you want you want to get you want to get real? Yeah, yeah. So it was like coming back to him. Animation is what I always wanted to do. Like, like, like I wanted to do video game design as a kid, and then Incredibles came out, and like that sort of like dictated my life. But like, like that's the that's the job. Sure. Um, and I kind of you know I I left animation for a while because you know I, was, I got offered X Men, and I was like. As a nice kid, like I had to like say yes to that job, and then I was at Marvel for eight years, and then came back for Spider Verse, which because I like, couldn't say no, I knew someone there. Kind of, it was like the dream job, kind of an assignment. Um, but like the 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 two hit of like kind of like it took me a while because I mean you know working through COVID, and it took me a while to kind of really dawn like oh I got the dream job that I wanted as a kid like, like it's 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 taking off for that to dawn on me. But while also one of the really nice things about Disney Plus is they have a lot of these like behind the scenes or like making of interview sure. series, and anytime they would have one because they had a bunch of on Marvel and like Marvel comics, any Marvel artist I was seeing always had the same thing of like I always wanted to draw comics as a kid, and it really clicked. I never did. Oh wow! Comics was something that I could do, but it was never a dream of mine. Like I I loved reading it. I think you kind of feel the same. It's like I I love it as I'm, I'm a fan of it, but I don't want to do the thing. I want to yeah, enjoy yeah. it. Um, and that was kind of the like, oh, I don't enjoy making comics. Sure. And I was like, I have kind of no need to ever go back to it. Okay. That kind of like, and it, was, it also kind of come with the this realization even before COVID of like, I wanted to start going to conventions as a fan again. I, I want I wanted to stop go, tabling at conventions. I wanted to stop working at. It. I just wanted to go and see because that's what I used to do as a kid. Go to San Diego and like just get to enjoy the convention for sure. And so I kind of had this like double hit of like, oh, I just don't want to do comics. Like that's not where I find joy. I find I, like character designing feels right to me. Whereas then like, we're like, oh, then I get to just kind of go back to just reading comics as a fan. Like I think that's where I want to sit with. And like you know, it's 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 something I can do. Maybe one day I'll do it for myself. For but, sure. Like in terms of like a job, I don't think I ever want to go back. And you've done so many too. Yeah, like, like, it's kind the... of it's kind of out of my system. I was yeah. like, I've kind of done that, closed that door. Especially now with like doors opening up, you know, I'm like, I'm going to like go down this road for as long as I can. Because like we, we buried this just a little bit here for people that don't know. Mm -hmm. What did you do exactly on Across the Spider-Verse? I guess I technically have to say I am a co-lead character designer. But so much so that you're in like the first the real part of credits. the credits. Like the fancy the That's what I'm credits. saying. Like, that's I'm like, I, we got me and um, one of my other coworkers, Jesus uh, Alonzo Iglesias, <laughs> got moved up to the lead credit. Which we didn't know about. We were, cause I think, just, he and I were on it for th the longest time. We were on it for three years uh, each. So yeah, we got put into like the real credits of the movie, which was a surprise, but technically means that we're the we were the lead designers on it. So it, it's been pretty wild, knowing that like every night throughout COVID, we have our Discord, and we were all like, I'm talking like Warzone had just come out. It was 2020. Damn, it was baby. like a terrible time, but also some of my most memorable times yeah. gaming with friends, hanging out like until two in the morning every night on Discord. And Chris would just kind of like give us updates here and there. And it didn't really like hit me until I fully watched the movie. Mm -hmm. And it's weird because like mm -hmm. I've known and I've been like, you know, anytime we'd bring you up and, you know, uh, Chris would often play Warzone with us on our kind of funny streams, you know, when we first moved in the studio or even when we were still work from home, Chris would hop in and be uh, over Discord and play Warzone with us. And we would always say like, oh, the weapons armor to Chris Anka. And I'd always be like, also, one of the artists in Cross the Spider-Verse, super, super cool. And it didn't really fully hit me until those credits hit and the movie was over. I was like, oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> like, like yo, this dude was important. He was playing games with us. <laughs> yeah, it's like, like, I'm sitting there, you know, I'm like, I'm, I'm designing Spider-Man 29. I'm like, oh, let me go fucking carry these guys for three hours. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll I need to clear my mind. I, I, have to keep, break. I have to keep my email open just to make sure no one's hitting me up. <laughs> so I'll just yeah. be like, all right, all right, let's go back. Yeah, no. it, it didn't really fully hit me until that moment hit. And then I remember like texting you immediately after. I was like, oh my God. And then saying, 
hey man, I couldn't fucking find you in the credits. I don't know what happened. And he was like, no, I'm in the very, very beginning. I was like, oh my God, that's even crazier. Well, it, it's kind of the same to me because leading in the movie, people are like, oh, like, are you excited? Like, how do you feel like the movie coming out? I'm like, it doesn't feel real because it was just something I did at home for three years. Like, yeah. it, like, it doesn't correlate to me that like I worked on a movie. It was just like, I don't know. I, just, I was just drawing shit for three years and then, you know, who knows? And yeah. then it's like, now here's a movie. I'm like, those were two separate things to me. Have you done movies before? No. Wow, this yeah. is your first fucking movie? Yeah. And it was this? The only animation credit cool. I had before this was I was uh, story and design on the 2012 Ninja Turtle show, and I was on that for a year, and then I left that for comics. So this was my first time coming back. Yeah. Can I just interrupt real quick and say that when Greg was having his little 1v1 with Chris right there, and you could only see them two in the shot. Much better show. Nick looked like he was entering a different dimension. <laughs> I saw his eyes wandering. Do you just use like, CZ to watch it? They, they were, uh, Greg, they were, his eyes were just juddering back and forth. And then at one point, he looks down and he looked at both of his hands. <laughs> <laughs> He's having a fun. What You're we okay? say is usually Nick is rolling right now. <laughs> I, I don't feel right. <laughs> <laughs> if Nick starts grinding his teeth, we need to get yeah, something. It's not bad. <laughs> It's not good. Yeah. yeah. It's just not right. Nick, would you like you know? me to take the, the cup away from No, you? I think it's I'm like done a... with the prime, but actually, okay. Kev, what I would love for you to do is bring me some sort of water yeah. or a sparkling sure. water is fine. Oh, just guess. something that's like, um, oh, Tim's got it. Something I can hydrate myself with Kev, because I that was so I much caffeine. Out, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, this is like when Bill Paxton, right? Got, what do you no. Yeah, 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 Bill Paxton. I'm, got I'm good. PCP'd on the set of Titanic and then he went home and drank beer. Who needs drinks? I'm going to get you guys drinks. Huh? I'm good. I'm good. Okay, thanks. Yeah, Coke, please. Andy, the the bottom oh, part of my hand was hot. <laughs> the top part was cold. <laughs> yeah, it was very. Ah, yeah, we're it was just so funny to look well, at Nick, man later. to watch Nick freaking out at during this like conversation, and then again the hands thing was just like <laughs> an extra step of like Nick going, "Where am I right now?" It was bad. For a second there, I was lost, <laughs> and then it was one of those things where I'm like, at some point they're gonna ask you a question. You should pay attention. <laughs> well, if I, now you just make suits. That's all I gotta say. Yeah. Here and then he busts out his phone and I help. Was, He's dialing nine one one. That's what I thought, Greg. <laughs> No joke. No joke. I thought he was busting out his phone to slack Google. Tim and be like, hey, I got to go right now. No, like, I was going to slack Cool Greg and ask him to bring me a, oh, a water. Okay. But then I was like, oh, I'll just get, I'll just wait for a nice like pause. I, in, Google in heart the, attack symptoms. Yeah, I was like, I'll, I'll wait for a nice pause in the conversation. I'll, I'll excuse myself. I manifested it. There's just enough of us here, but holy crap, yeah. I want to make sure you're okay. There was a moment where it went from my jaw straight to my head and mm -hmm. my vision blurred a little bit. Mm -hmm. That was interesting. You got to write it out. You got to write it out. You yeah. take another hit. And just you're push like, through. Oof. Oof. Man. So now, Chris, for those three years then, yeah. Is that, and like, would you consider, and, and this is a weird one, I guess, beforehand you're doing comics, you're working with Marvel, you're doing this stuff, but it's project to project, right? Mm -hmm. Like you do this, this, contracts and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So for those three years, is that a full-time job? Like, is that like, mm -hmm. okay. Well, it was, it was a two-month gig that never ended. Okay, okay. It was, it was they, they signed me on for two months, and then it would be like, they would ask me again, like, do you want to re-up the contract? Like, it was kind of like to see how I would do. I think coming from comics, it was a little more of like, we don't know how he's going to, you know, roll on this movie. And so it was two months, and then it was like, oh, we'll add another two months, and then we'll add three months. And then it kept going, and then after a year and a half, I was like, you can just stop asking. Like, I'm not going anywhere. Just keep the check. Like, as long as you want me here, I'll stay here. And so I, and I was on it till the release. At what point did your process in it start to, like, at what point did you start to have more of a, I'd say, leadership position at you becoming a co-lead? Because I assume when you're doing these two months, it feels like you're kind of just doing what needs to be done. And then eventually, what point do you start going like, I think this would be cool, or I think this would be cool? Not ever really that. Um, but like about, I'd say a year before release, um, that's when like things start getting heavy and like we need to actually like nail, or like models are coming back of these characters. And I made it very evident because, you know, job security. You know, get the job you want. Yeah. I would tell them, like, no, no, I want to do the drawers because that's, that's really where it's important. And so I, I want to do the what? I want to do drawers. Like, they'll send back a model, and then you have to, like, tweak the model to make sure it looks good. Um, just because sometimes just translation or what have you, but those models just aren't pushed enough. Um, and, you know, we're someone like, we're like Riot Games, they, like, are super um, overly clear in their design process. So the modelers can't translate, like you can't miss. Yeah. With us, it's a bit more of like model, modelers are artists too. Mm -hmm. So let's see what they'll do first. And then the I'll collaborate. And then I'll just punch up. Yeah. And I made it very evident I wanted to do that job. Usually that job on most productions are is a completely different person. The guy who comes up with the design and the guy who like does the what they call like the chore work are usually two different people. 
But I was like, no, I want to stay on the movie. I really want to do that job. And so I think it just became kind of like a rolling thing of like, give one to Chris, see how he does. And then, oh, okay, we can give him another one. And then eventually it would just, they stopped telling me and they started just giving them to me. Um, and so like, I kind of just made my own job security on it. Doing a thing, like I genuinely enjoyed it, but like that was, I think that was where it became like, oh, we can rely on, he's no longer just like the guy doing the assignment. It's like, we can rely on the guy. Um, and, and then it just kind of kept, you know, just kept going. It was never ended. So many spiders. Yeah. Yeah. I, th- I think, I think 170. So wild, man. I mean, some don't. I think I, I designed about 200, but then either between like legal or production time or what have you, most of those don't make it in. So I think I have somewhere between 150, 170. Was that what? where Shirtless Spider Man died? Mm, yeah. Who, who's the that? Art book. He's, got, he's the star of the art book. He's on like the se- oh. first page of the oh. art book. <laughs> Wouldn't know, I, I haven't got my art book yet. I don't know anything huh. about that. Yeah. Huh. These just... freaking art books, by the way, I just need to let everybody understand this real quick. I pre ordered mine the moment that they went up, mm-hmm. and I was like, Chris is going to be here. This is perfect. They delayed it. They're like, it'll be here this weekend. I was like, still, it's going to be okay. Just got delayed till August. I'm like, no. this fucking sucks. So me and Joey went on a trek today to two different Barnes & Nobles. There's no Barnes & Nobles close to yeah, us. Yeah, I was going to say, they're, they're yeah. not close anymore. No, we ended up going to Tanfran and then Hillsdale, Nick. And Because no, Tanfran no is dice. not there anymore, right? Oh, is there? Is oh, there it's still, still there. It's still there, but the book wasn't there. Oh, that's even though online it said it was. So anyways, we're waiting on ours too, Chris. Yeah. Cameron Kennedy has his. Thanks for nothing. I think, I think my work copy just got to me today. <laughs> <laughs> but so is that book without having seen it yet is that essentially you <laughs> no i mean n- not so much there's a very good like balance of other artists i am in it a lot just i think as soon as you get to like let's talk about other spiders then you know there's there's only nine spiders the entire movie i didn't do that's so insane I, so i think at a certain point it's just kind of like <laughs> you, you can't avoid me <laughs> you know? yeah so w- in coming up with these Hundreds of spiders, like, and and I've been seeing. You guys aren't following you on Twitter. What's the the Twitter? At Christopher Anka. Christopher Anka. On Twitter, uh, Instagram. With, yep. Uh, you've been doing amazing breakdowns of a lot of the different spiders, like what went into it, all this. And I get the vibe that you kind of got to pitch a lot of these, or kind of mm-hmm. just, hey, here it is, and like mm-hmm. Spider Man Unlimited from the the, the yeah, follow up so series of the nineties. I, I was given like an early PDF of like here's other spiders because they they knew like it's gonna be huge. Spoilers for everybody. Uh, like Spider Society Watch Force Tower. We're gonna fill out as many spiders as we can as we physically can. Um, and they gave me like here spiders we want to have in. And even that is like before legal has really involved. So we're just kind of just shooting our shot on a lot of these things. Um, but then like they gave me like twenty. And then we had like our main characters, and I was like, okay, cool. But like we, you still need a lot more. And so I think what was very beneficial for me was the fact that like coming from Marvel Comics. And like having worked with like the Spider-Man editor for a long time, I knew a bunch of them. There oh, he is. oh, there he is. Oh, that's look, crazy. Look wow, they there were, is. Oh, that's they crazy. were really, really nice to show the Spider-Man in this oh. one. What are you talking about? He looks great there. He looks uh, great in real really, life. Right? There's a little really less hair, but again, this kid really isn't smooth maybe and smooth. This is just a drawing of what could have been. And not, Bill Lord uh, said we, can't, we don't want the R. Yeah, we crazy. don't want an R rating, is what he said. So this was you. Yeah. But yeah, thanks for trying. Sorry that it's me over for for. For uh, full credit, it's me over Patrick O'Keefe, who's our production designer. It was an early like pitch um, illustration we did like years ago. It's like two year old drawing, um, and so they they had me like change out the spiders to be more correct of like what's actually going to be what was at that point in the movie. Um, this is cool. Uh, yeah, so then it, it just, we needed a lot more spiders, so I would just start throwing out names, and I would just do a drawing for like, as many of them as I like, possibly could, and then whatever made it through legal got put in the movie. So, so cool. and then there's some that like, like I posted Man Spider yesterday. It just Man Spider is such a complicated rig. It is not being worth the time. It would take. It would lose three other characters to get Man Spider in there because of how much effort he would take. So it's kind of like a balancing act. So this is a very ignorant question, but like taking like designs that exist already, like mm-hmm. old Unlimited Spider Man mm-hmm. or Spectacular Spider Man, mm-hmm. things like that. What are you then doing if you're the one like, so, hey, I feel like they should be here. Um. Let's okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna use one that uh, this this is is news for you guys. Um, News for anyone actually. I did a design for '90s animated Spider-Man, and what basically what I had to do was I needed to take the Peter's model and go, how do we tweak this to get it to there? So you know, a lot of those model sheets are not designed for 3D. They're designed to be drawn in different angles, so nothing has to really perfectly line up. My job was then like, 
I need to actually make this work so everything translates well and the model knows how to build this. So like with Spectacular, we sent them the Sean Galloway official model sheet from the show, but like certain things would move just because it's made to be good drawings, not actually work in 3D. So then I had to like, once we got the model back, I'm like, I had to like tweak a bunch, a bunch of stuff. So it's kind of different all over the place. It's like, I'm trying to do my best to take 2D assets and go, this actually needs to work in three-dimensional space and still show off those angles. Cause like those eyes are really weird in, in actual three dimensions. It works fine in a, in a drawing, but it doesn't actually turn correctly. Mm. So I had to like help them figure that out. I was wondering, were there any unimportant Spider-Man that the 3D artist just like texture replaced? Oh, a bunch. To help, oh, to a help bunch. with time and stuff like yeah, that? Yeah, because it's like, I did, with it's, it's, yeah, I did 150. There's like a, an additional 100 that they just texture swapped. Gotcha, okay. Bunch of them. Because I did 100 what we call generics, and they weren't based on anything, which is me throwing out random designs with random colors. Um, that then they would just okay, we'll take that one and put newsprint on that one and send that on that, and that's two now on the on the for the price of one. So it's a lot of that to pad out the room. Gotcha, that's cool. Are there any like Easter eggy ones that you haven't seen people talk about yet? Um, I'd I'd have to really look to see because I don't also know which ones made it through. You know, I I pitch all these and then it's like down to actual production. And that's on the other end. I don't know what these two are doing. <laughs> this uh, is just what it's like no, here. No. <laughs> I thought Andy was going to come down to my level instead he switched his feet that he's sitting on <laughs> and Nick goes hmm <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was going to come down to my level come on sit on, sit on your butt for Christ's sake um, there you go better no like but it, it. It, more, more interesting to me is how much people will overread into designs because it's like like the rule of thumb for everyone on YouTube if you have to like oh that looks like that's not we we're, we're not that subtle. Like, if it's going to be that Easter egg spider, we make it really fucking plain that that's that spider. There's no point in hiding any of it. So, like, the pair of Spider-Man's not in the movie. <laughs> like, if you have to, like, oh, maybe squint. Like, no, that's not that one. Mm, you know? Interesting. Yeah. The one me and Greg were debating a lot that I had, had admit defeat on on this one. Yeah. Uh, just, yeah. yeah, never saw Spider-Man. Yeah. Yeah. Sad. Well, and I'll tell you, just we never thought of that one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, I never thought of that. One. Notes for next time. Yeah, yeah. No. Oh, that would have been so cool if it looked. I was like just like I guess I was so CRT focused looking. on like the um, comics. I was trying to get as many comic spiders in there. I never really like thought too much of like other mediums, of, like other games, or you know. I said everyone wants the MTV Spider Man. Yeah, dude. Like it just it just you never Patrick occurred. Harris. Yeah, yeah. yeah, NPH. There's so many like comic spiders to use that like I'm like, I'm deep cutting like some of the like I guess the ones that don't. There were alternate pitched Ben Riley costume designs from Wizard Magazine that I have in there. Oh, yeah. I mean, we have like the Alex Ross unused Raimi Spider Man in the movie. That's so cool, man. I'm like, anyone that like, oh, I like that design a lot, I try to throw it. Yeah. So. And I, I, I appreciate your love for the Unlimited look. Uh, not a great, not a great show. Top three looks. Top three looks, though. Yeah. Yeah, so with, with with that, it was it was taking the, it was taking like the model and then like how, dare you. how does this translate onto the show. Peter okay. A model? Ultimate. Unlimited's different. All right. Wait, which which one's the one that was 3D? You like Ultimate. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Which was the one in the movie, right? Or Unlimited. I want this. Unlimited, yeah. Yeah. yeah Ultimate's not and in the movie. I always like I got to those shows a little too late. Like I feel like if I was in the moment we with were them prime as prime age, man. Like, how'd you miss it? No, but like uh, I, I got to them when they were showing up on digital uh, where I didn't even realize that they were like shows uh, that existed on MTV. Until I saw them pop up on, I forget what, maybe like Hulu back in the day. And I was like, oh, I didn't know this show existed. Let me check it. And I was like, nah. I feel like I've, if I would have watched this at the time, I would have been way more into it. Unlimited, like I was with the Fox Kids shows. Un Unlimited was a Fox Kids show. Unlimited was yeah. the follow-up so, to the 90s one. Oh. I, had a I, have a, I have a fever dream story. You might be the only person who might have the same similar experience. I remembered after the 90s uh, animated series came out. Yeah, I do remember this. You went to space. This like space. this had like a test screening on Fox Kids like a year before it actually premiered, mm -hmm. and I remember seeing it and like like whatever happened to that show? And they came up again. I was like, where did this go for a year? So fucking random. It yeah, was, no. And there was uh, that was during the era where uh, Fox Kids was like performing really well, mm -hmm. but they had a deal, a syndicated deal with baseball. Um, so whenever there were certain games, they would have to play, and it would just play over the shows mm. and they never reran the shows so it's saturday morning cartoons unless it's a baseball game and then all of a sudden people are just fucked oh, yeah. so 
Spider-Man uh, Unlimited got screwed, where there's like mm. a bunch of episodes that just never aired in America. Spider-Man mm. Unlimited like hates baseball. Mm. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah. Harper. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Hates Mickey them. Mantle. That's anyway. why he hates Mickey Mantle, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. He's the Hispanic heartthrob, Texas treat, Latino heat, clicking heads and ripping him to shreds, the globe trotting, head shotting, rooting, tooting, three-point shooting, nitro rifle from twitch.tv, Andy Cortez. Played more basketball, added more to the... The, I'm getting more and more golden as we go on. Ooh, golden oh, Andy. He lost some. I was hooping, man. Can you grip a ball? Uh, a certain ones. Not a chance. Yeah, like the little baby like ones. small ones? No, you know no, I mean? like, like the baseball. Like yeah, the grip's totally. got to be really like I got a grippy. play school hoop in the backyard. He can grip that ball. <laughs> <laughs> the grip's got to be grippy, man. I mean, some of them I can't. Like, all right, and Tim, there's sometimes where I can hold it out like that, but only if I have my thumb like yeah. below it. You know? But then I could do that every once in a while right. and like surprise myself. And, but look at that hand. Do it again, Andy. Be lucky to hold a mini watermelon. You know, he's not getting no basketball caught up there. I mean, they're mini smooth. What's the wooden, but yeah. <laughs> Can you hold a mini oh, watermelon? Oh, yeah. Get me a mini watermelon. I'll hold a bike. You hold it like that. They're so yeah. smooth. Cantaloupe, sure. Yeah. Because it's got the natural grooves. Yeah. It's like a grip. It's like the grip tape of sure. fruit. Yeah. I mean, but now mini. That Greg's a dad. I think he could probably crush one. <laughs> I don't know about that. I'm well, I mean, it's almost like, oh, this, 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 you know, small watermelon threatened Ben's life. Oh, then for think, sure. Yeah, I'll yeah. crush that watermelon. Small I really, really want to cut the back of Greg's hair. You want to cut it? Oh yeah, it's good. Those strands are just too long. Oh, oh, we'll get a pair of scissors. Get in there and do it real quick. Um, Nibble it off. Did we talk about the other day when when Ben came in to the office and knew Roger's name but not mine, and it was I went into existential crisis mode. Have you been thinking about it ever since? Mm, Yeah, yeah, yeah. I gave him three toys, uh, and I was vindicated when uh, he took my Harry Potter. Well, it's not even my Harry Potter Funko Pop. The guys just think it's hilarious. Put stuff on my desk. Don't think I don't know Mike Broglow. Um, but he takes my little Harry Potter Funko Pop, looks at it for one second, and I had put the tech tech on the bottom of it, oh, so Harry Potter could scan around. Looked at it, and in per- in just perfect Ben fashion, <laughs> so, this is so Ben, just rips the glasses off of it. <laughs> I was like, I don't like these. Rips them off, throws them on the floor, plays with it, and Jen says, nah, it's his new favorite toy, and I, it warmed my heart. And then he leaves. Two hours later, I look over, and I see it just in the perfect spot, like hidden on somebody else's uh, like filing cabinet, yeah. and then I was like, "Well, maybe he doesn't love me after all." And then right at the end of the day, you're like, "Hey, where's that Harry Potter toy Ben wants?" And I was like, "Fuck, I, I was won. like, fuck you, Roger." <laughs> fuck I you, see it every day Roger. on my kitchen table. Yeah, the bro. tech deck and all, it's all That's there. He's there playing with it. He's having a great time. I'm so glad about that. Don't worry about it. I'm so glad about that. Ladies and gentlemen, if you didn't know, this is the kind of funny podcast. Each and every week, four, sometimes five, best friends gather on this table. Each coming to talk to each other about whatever it is they want to talk about. If you want to talk with us, of course, you can head over to kindoffunny.com slash KF podcast to write in with your topics of conversation for free. Then, of course, you can watch us record the show live on patreon.com slash kindoffunny a day before it goes live anywhere else. Of course, on patreon.com slash kindoffunny, you can get all the shows ad free. You can watch all the podcasts get live as we record them. You could get a bevy of benefits like hundreds of exclusive programs over there like Kind of Feudy, Greg Way, etc. Uh, if you want even more about Chris Anka's amazing career in doing art and stuff, we talk about Superman and the Superman suit he, des- he designed for my adventures uh, with Superman. That is available right now as a Greg way over on patreon.com slash kind of funny. If cool Greg's press the, the, the publish button. I don't know. Cameron Kennedy, you're in charge of telling me in the live chat if it's live yet. I know it will be eventually. Cool Greg has the file. Things are happening on that level. However, if you have no bucks to toss our way, it's no big deal. You can get each and every episode of the Kind of Funny podcast free with ads, of course, over on YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny and podcast services around the globe. No matter where you get the show, thank you for supporting us. It means the world to us. No, it's technically part of the side, though. That's what you're missing. Holy shit. <laughs> it's not part of the back. It's part of the side. I mean, I, you know what? I trust Jen implicitly with my hair, and I trust Andy implicitly with my hair. Thank like, you. Andy's take, Andy that. took my hair to another level when he said, "Start, you know, push it up, put the put the the cream in it, and then push it up, and then when you leave, and then then spray that." And then uh, I have a lot. Of, I have a lot of body. I have a lot of hair. Letting it I off. I got some got in, some got in his hoodie, but it's okay. Not all of it. That's oh, fine. Man, you're gonna be on the way home, and you're gonna be like, oh, itchy, hair balls. itchy, 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 itchy. Uh, some housekeeping for you. Like I said. Chris Anka worked on Spider-Verse and My Adventures with Superman. Support both of these. Now, again, back to this thing of you abandoning comics and turning your back on your art. Okay. Um, so you did this thing. You did the Spider-Verse for the three years or whatever. Mm-hmm. Now are you a full-time designer? That's what you or, yeah. what you call yourself? And That's then, what I would. Yeah. So are you still then moving project to project? I mean, obviously, there's another Spider-Verse coming. We know. Mm-hmm. We're excited for it. Mm-hmm. Can't wait for it. Mm-hmm. But are you 
is, are you doing the two contract two month contract over and over again on mm-hmm. that right now? Mm-hmm. Are you doing something else? Are you doing multiple things? Or can you talk about this? And mm-hmm. I'm not trying to pin you down. Mm-hmm. Can't can talk- talk- I can't do anything. Okay. Technically, now from here on, everything I'm doing is NDA. Fair enough. So. Okay. Okay. So if you had to say how many two month contracts you think you're going to have to do mm-hmm. for anything, not, I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not trying to pin them down about anything in particular. <laughs> Also, Joey Noel is freaking out in chat saying, those are my scissors. I've been looking for them for weeks. They were on Roger's desk. They were on Roger's Fucking desk. Fucking Roger. There, Roger, man. Losing a lot of points. Fucking Roger. I was going to say, and if you notice, Roger had her scissors. Roger doesn't have any hair. So right there. Coincidence? I don't think so. I don't know. With Joey's scissors. God damn it. God damn there's it, just, Roger. There's just a hairball next to me now. So, like, you, you're NDA'd going forward. Are you going backwards? Like, uh, you, seem, you seem more open than I'd expect you to be both... On shows, but then also on your your Twitter with the way you're breaking down all the stuff. Like, I from outside looking in on this, mm-hmm. I'm very impressed with Spider Verse for so many different reasons. But the amount of artistry that goes into it from every diff- different level, right? So I see that being different than other movies of wanting to celebrate this type of stuff. Mm-hmm. Is that your experience, or are you just like fuck it? We'll talk to me later. I well, it's more of like they did on the first movie. Like the first movie, like. Oh, no, like the entire movie is online. That's on Twitter. If you like, so, look part of it. Yeah, yeah. Or, like, or or concept art or, or um, art station. So it was kind of like, oh, like they're already cool with this. And I think we just kind of like the whole crew picked up a rhythm, or we're just like, oh, we're just gonna like show. Like the whole movie is about like the art of making comics and movies. And so it's like you can't really hide the art of making the movie. Yeah. <laughs> you know. So I think we were all just kind of like, yeah, oh, fuck so it. Cool. Like just let's just kind of like go out there and just show what we did. So. It is. It is kind of an, a, a a unique thing because I know other studios are very much like we have to really c- control what we show. You can only show the final. Maybe you know. Mm-hmm. Um, with the, with with Sony, they just seem to be like, whatever, man. It's all good. Please promote it, however. Yeah, man. yeah. We yeah. just we just uh have now made more money than Guardians of the Galaxy three in theaters. Wow! Hell yeah, yeah, dude. That's insane. That's yeah. massive. Take that, Groot. Yeah, we're some more over six hundred mil. I think. Yeah. That's awesome. Guardians didn't hit over 600. Whoa. Guardians that's Three? in the range, though. Guardians never crossed a bill. Yeah, but I just, I mean, the final Guardians, like, I don't know. It just kind of felt like. I think the, I think the rhythm, the, everyone's kind of rhythm with superhero movies is a little slow. Sure. We're going to get to that in one second, because that's still the topic that you had us yeah. delay and did all this stuff. Yeah. But you mentioned, of course, the art of making comics, making movies out of it. Let's talk about the art of making comics and making TV shows out of it. We're doing a very special screencast this week, ladies and gentlemen, about American-born Chinese. Uh, friend of the show, Gene Luen Yang, will be coming back to Kind of Funny after being in the original spare bedroom, oh, doing COVID content with us. He will be here in the studio for the first time, along with three members of the Disney Plus show. Uh, they'll be uh, uh, Skyping in to talk to us about, hey, what it was like making the show and all that stuff. So, of course, either go watch the show on Disney Plus, pick up uh, Gene's book, American Born Chinese, the graphic novel, and then, of course, tune in on Wednesday to YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny and podcast services around the globe for that special screencast. Thank you to our Patreon producers, James Hastings, Casey Casey Andrew and Nathan Lamoth. We're brought to you by Bird Dogs. And hey, why don't we go hear about that ad right now? This episode is brought to you by Bird Dogs. Bird Dogs make you look good. Bird Dogs stretch khaki shorts are designed to fit slimmer through the thigh and leg, giving you a truly sculpted look. They fit way better than regular shorts that are made of a stiff, restricting cotton. Bird Dogs use anti-stink sweat wicking fabric that keeps you cool and dry all day long. I've been going down to the heat of Los Angeles with Gia a lot recently, and I've been loving the breeze thanks to my Bird Dogs. They got Oxford shorts, khaki shorts, bathing suits, and much, much more. My favorites are the Art Farts Knockers, and it's not just because of the name, it's because of the blue, but hey, the name doesn't hurt at all. Art Fart Knocker, come on. Go to birddogs.com slash kindoffunny or enter code kindoffunny for a free Yeti-style tumbler with your order. That's birddogs.com slash kindoffunny or use the promo code kindoffunny for a free Yeti-style tumbler. Birddogs.com slash kindoffunny. Promo code kindoffunny. Okay, so weeks ago, mm. possibly months, Andy was like, I have this great idea for a topic. Just two weeks ago. Shut up. 
I'm going to talk about, hey, whose career do you want? MCU up to this point or the future of the DC? And it's a sportsy thing, so we didn't fully understand it. Oh. But Tim wasn't here. So we're like, well, we can't do it without Tim. And like, well, all right, we'll do it next week. That. And then Chris saw it, and he said, hey, I'm going to be on in two weeks. Let me come be a part of that. And so last week we had a dynamite cast where he just made fun of Nick. Yeah, Nick. Back can, I, can I interject real quick? Yeah, please. Tim, that, that wasn't a compliment. Mm -hmm. I know it sounded like one. But he said we physically we literally can't do this without Got Tim. It. Got it. Because he went to me and I fumbled it so bad. Got it. <laughs> that he was like, "Fuck this! We got to yeah. stop talking about this. Right, we need, right, we need someone that pays attention." We couldn't do without you. We love you. Yeah. You're our MCU. Either way, I get it. You're the only one watching Secret Invasion. Well, apparently you're no longer the superhero guy. Apparently it's Mike. Mike's the superhero. Oh, oh of course, Mike. Yeah, yeah, the number one superhero yeah. guy. Yeah, he's super. Yeah. I've he, never been more frustrated with the way someone watches a movie than Mike Howard. We don't need to get all the way into it, but honestly, any way you look at it, was it on Discord where like, or I forget. Or it was dinner last night. Mike's like, I, I'm really excited to watch Oppenheimer on my phone. And I was like, I'm pretty sure Chris Nolan would come and stab you if you do that. Yeah. Like, and we'd all be fine with like. We no. all agreed that like, if we found out that famous director Christopher Nolan murdered our friend Mike, Mike. we'd be like, you know what? That's we're not going to press charges. <laughs> like, I, I he, think he, he, he admitted it. He had it coming. <laughs> and think, also, when we first, can we just say this real quick? When yeah. we first sat down, mm -hmm. Chris goes, Oh, so is like, this the TV here that Mike has trouble seeing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. I can read it perfectly fine, and let me say, <laughs> I'm legally blind in one eye. Wow. <laughs> and I can read that totally fine. But it's weird, because you have these things on your face yeah, that totally help fine. you do that. <laughs> yeah. And it's so wild that Mike won't do it. Can I tell you the day that I think we all bonded and became best friends? Was the day that Mike... Um, Big TV. We were on Discord, and Mike explained to us how he sleeps. <laughs> Remember how he sleeps and why he sleeps that way, Andy? <laughs> Was it that with the lights fully on? Lights fully on, ESPN blasting in his face, and it's the, the covers. The, co oh, <laughs> the covers pulled over his head. Out. The covers pulled over his head because, and I quote, I think it was because if the Texas Chainsaw Massacre guy comes in, he's going to think that Mike's awake and get scared off. <laughs> <laughs> Such God a special God. <laughs> He's the best. I think that's because his parents would like prank him and his brother when they were kids. Is that what it is, Mike? Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, hey Roger. Wait, what a fucking weird ass. Hey Rod. What? Roger. They're, they're working on something for yeah, Just yeah. so you know, I won. You know what? Uncle Nick fucking won. He's doing a show off the screen. He's <laughs> <laughs> so weird. He's, he sounds like such a 13-year-old, like, leaving the room from his parents. He's <laughs> so weird just going back into his room to play video games. I told Roger room. that he has to take care of me when I'm older because I don't have children. Sure. And that when I um, poop my pants, he has to clean out the diaper. This sounds like a good, like, modern-day Logan where you're Professor X and he's yes. Logan. You yes. Know what I mean? He's and wheeling me around, getting me my heroin. Him? Oh, it happened. It happened. <laughs> He's like, at some point in your life, you're just going to get a text that says, it happened. <laughs> and then I'll have to come yeah, to you. Yeah, 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 that's fair. No, that's fair. no, no, no. Yeah, no, no, no. Scoop it out. No! That's a scoop. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Tim, I changed a lot of diapers. There's a lot of scooping. Yeah, I you get it. I, mean? I get it. I get One it. of the best stories you've ever told is the story of the the Poopopolis. Yeah. Poopopolis. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I can't say it. When you said it was up to his... <laughs> <laughs> that the whole onesie was just up to his neck. Yeah, yeah, it was Boy, yeah, yeah. you're awesome. You're a good dad. I try my best. My dad would never have done that. My dad would have handed it yeah. over to my mom. Elena! Yeah, that would have been Get it. Get in here. This kid smells. Smells real bad. <laughs> yeah, Mike's eyesight sucks. Mm -hmm. sucks. I'm glad it's finally, hopefully, going to get fixed. We'll see. We make yeah. a lot of promises here we're going to follow up on. So if they actually go... Because I think their whole plan still is like to go to the optometrist, yeah. but not ask ahead of time. Yeah. Yeah, it's gonna be one we're the, gonna be the old uh, phone in the pocket gimmick again. That's right? possible. We're should, we're we're gonna try to be on the up and up with the optometrist kind of illegal, and like, see where he's at. Hippa thing, you know. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, that's on them, right? They gotta check our pockets. <laughs> yeah, that is on them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Fucking, you know, my optometrist <laughs> when I walk through metal detector, they pat me down. It's a whole rigmarole. I just have a GoPro on my chest. I don't know why you're asking. <laughs> <about it. laughs> it's just even is more weird. Chest, like, is right? <laughs> when's the last time somebody went to the optometrist with their three best friends? <laughs> and then the best friends wanted to come in for the eye exam. No, Nick's the dad and I'm the brother. Oh, yeah. my Mike needs God. emotional support. You got to hold his hand yeah. the whole thing. No, if we don't take him, he won't go. That's so so this, this has That's to so happen. True. Andy, you're here. Tim's here. I'm here. Mm -hmm. Nick's mm -hmm. here. Chris Hank is here. Mm -hmm. Explain your topic to us. I love a good sports debate. I love when people debate sports stuff on Twitter or on TV. And a lot of times, one of the constant things everybody does is like, whose career would you would you build a, or, or what player would you build a team around right now? And they say like, right now, Steph Curry, thirty five years old, sure. at 
nearing the end of his career, but still got enough basketball in him that you know he's a proven great commodity. Or somebody like the Dallas Mavericks, Luka Doncic, who is like up and coming, immediate superstar, but you may not know if you're fully convinced that they're going to have a future, like the biggest and brightest future ahead of them. And I was like thinking about that with DC and Marvel, right? Marvel, I feel like right now they're hitting at about a 60% clip with sure. my enjoyment of their movies mm -hmm. and me thinking that they are, I, I guess, getting me excited for the future of what the MCU can do. Would I take that or would I take James Gunn taking over a very, very struggling DC side of things and kind of, he's the leader now and we know what he can do. Do we take, like, what would you pick? Would you pick uh, James Gunn's DC stuff or would you take Marvel right now, which is struggling, but still like not of, doing as bad as y I think we all think they are, you know? I love this. I love it a lot. You love sports analogies. I, I do love good sports analogies. I mm -hmm. understand you made that clear and concise, mm -hmm. and I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. No problem. Perfect. I, who wants to start this one? I mean, I we talked about it a little bit last time. I am more excited for what's happening in the DC universe right now. Not 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 because or solely because I love James Gunn. And I trust James Gunn. And I like his work, um, but because they have an opportunity to start everything over. So we get to potentially get more origin stories. We get to potentially kind of relive the first couple phases of Marvel, potentially with a little bit more, you know, having learned everything we've learned from that, all the all the trappings of the DC stuff. I really think he's going to push everything forward more. See, if I can immediately interject. Yeah, absolutely. Can. Podcast here. Love you, baby. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's the idea. What I like about it is that I don't think you're, you're going to get it, obviously, in the introduction of characters, but I love that he's been on record of being like, Superman Legacy is not going to have the origin. Yeah. You know the origin. It's fine. Fair. Batman's Batman and son, right? So it's like, all right, he's already Batman. We don't need the fucking pearls on a gun. I, so I, I think I misspoke. And you're right. I don't mean origin stories as in like, oh, Martha. I mean, like, we're seeing oh, the new actors the past coming past through. Story. We're get we're getting the beginnings of something yeah. again, which uh -huh. I think is very very exciting. always exciting. The new the new, we haven't. Even, I don't think I've even talked to you about your thoughts on the new Superman. Um, Superman. I didn't. Uh, I don't, I'm not familiar with him at all. Really, uh, I saw him in the show Hollywood, and it was yeah, just you like when watched I watched the Greg way. I did a great Greg. Yeah, that's the whole it. thing about it. Yeah, did Chris, Hank, what, what a fan! Thank you, thanks for supporting us on baby. Patreon. Well, you know what I mean. I don't know how you watch all our stuff, Chris. I'm just sitting drawn at my desk all day. working all day. I've nothing else to do. Fair, fair enough. Fair enough. Anyways, Three o'clock uh, happens and your stream ends. I'm like, what do I do now? <laughs> just like I nailed, just like I, I nailed the uh, Tyler Hawkland, right? When I was watching uh, the Link Letter film that he was in about baseball players. You know what I mean? Oh, uh, I what watched was that. that and I, it doesn't matter for if you remember, come up with it. No bad idea. But I was watching it, and I remember watching, and I was watching it by myself, and I, I was like, damn, that guy. He took his shirt off at one point. I was like, damn, he must be pissed that Henry Cavill got that role because he, he would be such a perfect Superman. And then he got cast in the Arrowverse, soup, and then in you know Superman and Lois. Same thing for this, where this guy was in Hollywood which was a show I saw no one, I mean Joey, but other than Joey and me, no one's watch or talk about. And Jen and I loved it, just devoured it on Netflix. It's like, I'm going to get all of the dates wrong, but it's like a, a 40s Hollywood show of like, but it's alternate reality, so they're doing all this progressive stuff. I know yada, exactly yada. what you're talking about. That kind of came and went, right? And exactly. It was yeah. one thing that was done, but he was in it, and he was a main character, and I remember watching me, and I'm like, damn, this guy's got a Superman look to him. You know, uh, he it sucks that Tyler Hawkland got cast as Superman and thing. And then he got out, I was like, fuck yeah, this is great, this is perfect. It's it's wild though because that the day the news broke, I popped in. I was like, oh, what, are they just writing about like a younger Henry Cavill? He yeah, looks he so look, much yeah, like yeah. him. That's a little. I mean, no disrespect to the actor. I'm not. Of course not. He's I you're not the first shake. person to say this. But yeah, it's it's a little weird that it it, it gives me pause because I'm like we're kind of walking on well worn uh, you know territory here. But goddamn, he's good. He's not bad. But he's got a different cut to him, right? Like, I mean, granted, he's going to bulk up, but I have. A I don't want him to. Though. I have a feeling they're going to keep him up. a lean Superman again because let's make him look different. Keep then. him lean. Let, I like make, that. make him look more like Chris Reeves. You know what I mean? It's, Who it, put on weight too, but you know. It's one of those things where, yeah, what, you mean Pattinson with the Batman or? No, Chris Reeves. Oh, Chris, Christopher, Christopher Reeves. Sorry. Christopher Reeves. Sorry, I think you meant Matt Reeves. Um, I, I was going to bring up just Pattinson being, you know, I, 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 of course, I owe him an apology when, when we hang out again. I will apologize to him. Yeah. Of course. Because I was like, this is the dumbest idea ever. And then, of course, uh, watching that movie he was in with uh, by the guys that did the Adam Sandler flick, good time. Um, I'm like, he can act. I don't know. See him as Batman. Pleasantly surprised. That's what I'm talking about. DC, they're throwing you curveballs. And we're knocking them out of the park. So I'm excited about that. Whereas I don't really know. It was a terrible analogy. Don't look at that. Don't fucking. You <laughs> focus threw, on me, baby. They threw him suits for a split second. I just, that's what it caught. Yeah. Tim's in reaction. Like, um, so I'm excited about it. But I will tell you, I love Rachel Brosnan. Well, let, me, let me ask She's you this. Great. Let me ask you this, though. What I, what I love about the Batman is that it lives on its own. It has no executive oversight. 
breaking it has to be part of a franchise. Do you think that's going to happen? Like, I worry about that with James Gunn because it's what I don't like about the MCU. Is it, it all has to be connected? It all has to be connected, and that's the that's the linchpin. And I think it's both a good thing and a huge ball and chain because I like when like a movie can just live by itself, which is why like the Batman is my favorite Batman movie I've ever seen because it just lives mm. over there by itself and doesn't have to deal with anybody. I'll take the trade off for the opportunity to see like we talked about we were watching the flash movie say what you will about the flash movie but there was the moment where they all kind of come together and just sort of have a little witty banter mm -hmm. back and forth and we get to see you know a few of the justice leaguers on screen together i think it's worthwhile pushing toward that i think we have to have that at least once in my lifetime which would be nice not that we haven't seen it before i was gonna say you had it twice kind of don't worry well, I couldn't tell because everything was black and white. Yeah, like, yeah, what, yeah, yeah. I, what's happening here? Is this nineteen <laughs> twenty? Reach around. Weird. Um, no, I don't know. I, my vote is I'm 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 more excited, and I, I would take the DC going forward as opposed to what Marvel has to offer for me right now. That's my I, vote. I I I think shocking no one, so I'll get myself out of the way. I would go DC as well. I think it is the blank page. It is you know, not no, there's it's Schrodinger's cat, right? Where it could be great, it could be terrible. Nobody knows at this point. You don't have any you don't have any conceptions about it. The thing I still find myself with Marvel, um, and it, uh, you know, obviously I love the MCU. We've had so much great 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 times with MCU. Still hung over from Endgame. Still just chasing chasing something that I don't think we'll ever get again. It's, crazy. it's been four years. That high of Endgame, right? The build up to Endgame, like sitting in. I'll never forget being outside of the theater, getting ready to watch it. Watching it happen, we flew to Chicago the next day, and I went and saw a midnight screening with family members there, and it was like their excitement. Like it was, you know, it's kind of like we always joke about Pokemon Go being as close to world peace as the world ever got. Like there was that moment too with Endgame where it was all anybody cared about, and everybody knew everything. And so, like to be on the other side of it, I feel hungover from it, where it's just harder to get excited about this stuff and have it be so many times of like. Again, no shade to any of these people or the properties. And I'm no, I hope I eat my words when Secret Wars comes and it keeps going, it keeps building. But it is that thing of like sitting down to Ant Man, and even like even before Ant Man, whatever it's going to be, it's Ant Man is not as exciting as Iron Man or Captain America. And it's that thing where it's like, and doing me wrong, I'm excited to see what Anthony Mackie does as Captain America, right? But I'm still waiting on New World Order, which names changed, right? Brave New World. Yeah, Brave New World. Yeah. And so it's this thing of just like, I feel like the heavy hitters are on the bench right now, and I know we're building a new team of what they hit, and it's like, okay, cool, but at some point, at least right now, it's been, you know, a decade of MCU being fucking awesome in these Grand Slams, right? And it's what I've, I talk about all the time with DC, where it's like, it drives me fucking crazy to go to a movie theater and see Suicide Squad or Ant-Man or or not Amen, I'm uh, Aquaman, or about to be Blue Beetle, mm -hmm. and be like, I fucking want Batman, I fucking want Superman, I want Wonder Woman, I don't want two Shazam movies, like, you know what I mean? And like, so we're kind of not in that era, but I can see similar movie. similarities of that era with where we're at with MCU, whereas again, mm -hmm. for me, way more exciting to be like, fuck yeah, Superman Legacy, all right, you know, Brave and the Bold, let's see what you know, are going to do with Batman and Son, like, yeah, fuck yeah, fuck yeah, and like, to the, you know, how, how do I feel about it being an interconnected universe, like, my thought would be, and I could obviously be proven wrong, and James Gunn could wash out in three years because WB never commits mm -hmm. to anything, it would appear. Yeah. But you would hope that they've taken their lumps, they've eaten their medicine, yeah. and they're like, listen, we just got to do this. And I think if you're putting James Gunn at the top of the food order, I think he's going to say, yeah, we're going to have crossover events, but I don't think it's all going to build to that all the time. I don't think every movie has yeah. to be that. I think, the, I think Superman Legacy will be, obviously, this is the first one, very Superman Legacy-focused. Maybe you get a cameo from Batman, but I doubt it's Batman and him having to take on somebody. More Batman showing up to give advice to Clark if he needed it or some shit like that. I remember something? Great? Are there like two Batman movies? It's like it's not the Batman. I thought like the Brave and the Bold was like, like that's gonna be a different Batman than yeah yeah you know, yeah the, the, they're leaving the Pattinson universal yeah well itself. I'm not even including that like, I thought there was gonna be two within like there's the one that will be part of this new DCU and then there's like the Brave and the Bold which is like this I don't know. I don't I think, think that's right. Yeah. I think Brave and the Bold is the Batman and Sun, right? Be, yeah. yeah. Which is now going to be like what supposedly George Clooney? No. I don't. I don't. I'd knock it off really? for a second. Then what the yeah. fuck was the point of all that? <laughs> that was what well, we yeah. needed to end this universe and have a cool cameo. It was awesome. Because again, remember, it was supposed to be Keaton and Supergirl yeah, they, showing up and they, doing they, that whole thing. They filmed thing. that whole thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So don't worry about it. I don't know. Spoilers. We we know that like a huge amount of our audience is headed to go watch The Flash right now. I still haven't seen The Flash. Oh, I just know how it is. It's a good moment. The hit, yeah, yeah. I'm, like, I'm cool to see Clooney back. I'm like, I, but that's what I'm talking. So this is, I mean, obviously the Flash is not as gonna is is Dunzo, right? But that vibe of that movie, I mean, I was excited. I'm like, if we could come close to that, 
granted, I don't do I think anything's gonna ever be able to build up to Infinity War and Endgame again. Personally, I I don't see that, but I'm not making these movies. I'm sure James Gunn can try to figure something out, but I don't need that. That's what I like about DC right now is it does kind of feel like, man, they're the underdog. They've messed up so many times that my expectations are low enough that I can go in and just have fun with these mm-hmm. movies. And Peacemaker is so good. Is what is my is my touchstone for that? Where I'm like, this movie is is a good vibe. It hits for me. I like it. I liked the, the, the latest Suicide Squad. I'm liking where they're at with these. It's a little bit more free form. It doesn't feel like it's so just packed into the same tight packaging as the MCU right now. And I'm okay with that. It doesn't have to be like the best thing we've ever seen for the next 20 years. It just needs to be fun. And like The Flash was fun. The Batman was good. It was fun. Well, fun, maybe not the word for it. Intense yeah, you're not talking and about the other 10 DCU projects that happened in between them or around them. Sure, sure, sure. But very, very bad. But there are moments like Suicide Squad was fun. Or mm-hmm. not the Suicide, Suicide, Suicide Squad. Suicide Squad. Yeah, that was fun. Mm-hmm. That's cool. That even that was a little more intense than I need it to be. Like we don't need to be going that hard with with some of the language and some of the violence and all that stuff. But if we can have if we can have a universe where a lot of that stuff fits in, if James kind of can make that work, I'm I'm on board for the next ten years. Why not? I, so, yeah. I'm kind of I, I totally see the DC side of stuff and having faith in James Gunn's vision and having faith that he will kind of be the let's say, like, the last quality check on... Call him the shepherd. ...on movies shepherd. of, like, having him... It's the same reason why I loved so much of what was happening with uh, Marvel several, several years ago when you're just knowing that, like, Kevin Feige's going to make sure that all these movies are very, very good. And I still think it's, like, an absolute miracle that 60% of the Marvel movies are, like, really goddamn awesome. And then... Some of the other ones are like still good, but maybe I didn't love them as much as the other ones. You know, like I, I, it's still wild to me that they hit at such a high clip in those kind of like pre end game days. I, 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 I feel like the smarter decision would be to say DC, but I am still excited to see what happens with Fantastic Four and with the X Men. That's the next and Blade big and like, moment, right? Th- that's what I want to see. That's what I'm excited for on the MCU side of things. And I also just kind of hope that there have been enough misses that we can write this ship. I think that's what's going to be the big... See what happens. To, to your point, Andy, and I think you're, you're nailing it, right? Like, Fantastic Four and X-Men, I do think represent where I'd be like, you can kind of really let go of the past, at least for me or whatever, right? Where it's not like I'm not still like, oh, man, I miss Iron Man. Oh, man, I miss Spider-Man. Oh, man, I miss, you know what I mean? Like these people who have been written out, killed off, whatever it's going to be. Getting to there and having it be like, okay, cool. Now it's X-Men. Now it's Fantastic Four. Now it's these newest characters you know and love already that are established and chasing that thing. I'm like, okay, cool. That I think that will be super exciting to get you back in the theater and the MCU in a way that like we're not there right now necessarily. Still excited for the Marvels, obviously, right? But like. I'm not Endgame excited, which I know isn't fair, but n- I don't think I'm Iron Man 3 excited either. Did you see that like, they potentially lost the Reed Richards and Sue Stormakers? They lost them? Apparently the, the runner-ups were Adam Driver and uh, Margot Robbie, and apparently they're both like, no, 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 we're not doing it. Interesting. Really? Yeah. I mean, they're all playing. Nego- that- and I mean, like, so this, there's this 100% kinda- could be, this, yeah. this is the PR lie of, of it all, 100 100- but like, but like, with how much I also was like finding kind of unnerving. Like, how does everyone keep reporting about this so much? Like, how is this so common knowledge? Like, that doesn't feel. It just feels like now there's just a lot more of like about the PR hype of everything rather than like just cast a thing and just do it. Like, just leave it alone. <laughs> yeah, th- that's kind of where I'm at. Is like all of this is both a blessing and a curse in the sense that there's realities we're dealing with where we are now 40 years into superhero movies and the last. 10, 15 years have been dominated by them, perfected by them in in every which way. And we've seen good, we've seen bad, we've seen everything in between. And we've seen so much of it that our expectations are so much higher, not just from a quality level, but from a cameo level, from a being part of the universe, but also standing alone, being a small standalone story that's very street-based, but also being part of a universe. Like we, the, the amount of boxes that need to be checked are just so much higher. And to your point about them, uh, these these people that, that may or may not be cast, going into Fantastic Four, it's like, all right, should they just cast a bunch of no-name up-and-comers? Or would Adam Driver being Mr. Fantastic help? Would that mm-hmm. be a good thing? Mm-hmm. Would that be worth the commitment to, what, $20 million um, fees in perpetuity for these people that they're trying to sign on for mm-hmm. 10 movies if the dream of this being universe actually works? Yeah. 
we're dealing with so much more of that where these movies are going to cost so much money and in a world where the reality is i keep talking about this there's only so many open spots at theaters and with all these movies competing with each other no fucking shit guardians only made only made 600 something million that's all they had a chance to do because so many of the premium formats are the next week taken up by mission impossible by um Sp spider-verse by literally fast and furious, fast and furious. Yeah. everything week after week after week they're all just eating each other's um potential spotlight um combining all that with the fact that we're all watching 10 million of these things shows movies properties multiverse everyone's doing multiverse 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 mm. we're already like over it yeah and then the thing that we're not over is the fun surprises guess what there aren't any anymore because yeah. every cameo YouTube deadpool channels. 3 is known now uh, that's like, driving me fucking crazy and God damn, never, every time never i open twitter stop. ign yeah. and and so i feel like by the time we get to deadpool 3 no matter how good it is the resulting kind of talk around it's going to be like eh, it's just a bunch of cameos even if it's an amazing yeah, movie just because like that's just where we're at. And so I feel like the whole idea of the superhero fatigue, it's so much more than that. I think it's just kind of like the realities of where we're at, where there is no winning. There is no, yeah. no matter how many 10 out of 10 wins they have. Because you, you said we had 10 years of bangers. It's like, really? We got like a, a solid like two years of bangers at the end there. Before that, it was kind of a mishmash. But yeah. we had phase one to be surprised by yeah. like, mm. oh, I'm really into Iron Man. I'm kind of into Captain America. Was well, so it you think Whoa, about phase I'm surprisingly two? Surprisingly into Thor. Out of phase two, there's like only two movies that people ever talk about being great. Exactly. Cap two and Guardians. And and we're you talking Thor about Thor two, Iron Man three, Avengers two, and we're like, eh. And we're talking about phase one and two where the movies were not coming out four times a year. They were coming yeah. out maybe one. here's one, here's a two year gap, yeah. here's a whatever the hell. So it's like once we got to this point that we are now literally getting four movies a year, yeah. average. And TV shows that yeah. are connected all during a time that's post Endgame, that's post this beautiful buildup that every single person was in. But on top of that, COVID happened. And now mm -hmm. here we are, people trying to figure out how to get through that. The streaming wars are happening. Everyone's just trying to fucking figure it out and trying to scrape it up as much money well, as I'm possible. Well, I'm sure from here we can commit to, and now there's a strike for the writers. And then and there's a writer's strike. Gonna be a and then there's strike. director's okay, strike coming. Okay, and then cool. there's the yeah. actor's strike coming. It's like, yo, we're just in such a bad place. So it's like, I, I don't know. I think the glory days are so over, but I'm far from giving up. I love this shit. And oh, yeah. like, I'll take it when it's good, it's bad. I want it when it's great. We're still getting those moments, man. We're still getting some amazing superhero movies. And they're best superhero movies when we don't think of them as superhero movies. They just happen to be. And James Gunn does that shit. Having said all that, to answer the question, I'm still going MCU. And I'm a Marvel guy through and through. I'm here for the story. We're now at a place where, as of a couple weeks ago, the Hulk rights are 100% with Marvel. They can make a Hulk movie. They can do World War Hulk. They can do all that stuff. The more ability for them to do the thing we've all been asking. Hulk and we're, Stone. We're getting Wolverine in a yellow outfit. Like, yeah. all these things. But it's like, I feel like all that stuff, it's like, all right, cool. That's the, it gives me that little, like, like, hit of like serotonin of oh i'm excited for this but it's like cool the movie needs to still be fucking like badass mm -hmm. i feel like with james gunn there are very few people i trust on the planet more than james gunn in terms of understanding ip and understanding how to adapt to that in in many different forms and characters and movies and filmmaking all of that so of course there's no one i'd rather do the dc than him he's already proven it with peacemaker he's proven it with suicide squad my problem is and you just said this we need a kevin feige James Gunn is going to be the Kevin Feige of a DC that's already had so many movies and so many good and bad. Not just bad. They've also had the Dark Knight trilogy. They've also had so many beloved movies, right? Now they need to start over again and explain that to people. Yeah. And the slate includes things like The Authority. Yeah. And like so much of that, you know, and it's still not even a clean start of Blue Beetle, but it's the character that's here, but it's not yeah. the movie, there, whatever. There's so much confusion going into already. this that I'm like... You're kind of working again, like with everything from the Flash into Blue Beetle. Like, oh, it's the first DCU character, but it's not the first DCU movie. Like, that doesn't make any sense to anybody, and you can't PR that. And that's the to jump normal off point. People. Yeah. And James Gunn is writing and directing Superman, the first movie in this. He's writing, directing, and being the Kevin Feige producing. Yeah. At some point, that ain't gonna work, man. And I hope, I hope that it just sets a tone, and that they stick to that tone, that it's all good. I. I'm very I'm more concerned about the DCU than I am thinking it's gonna work. However, like I'm saying, I hope that I'm fucking wrong and I think that James Gunn can do it. I think he can more than anyone else, but while also doing all that other stuff, I don't know. Yeah, I'm I, with you. That's this that's the concern, right? That it is a tall order. There is a lot of stuff, like you said, the authority and things like that. 
But then he says the right things, right? Where he is talking about, like, we don't want to do everything. We're not yeah. looking to do the weekly show. You know what I mean? Like, we're trying to pace this out. And it's like, okay, like, I hope that works. And I hope that. He did also say The Flash was the best comic movie he's ever seen. It's a really good movie. Comic book movie. The, uh, we talked a lot about that, how it yeah. feels like a comic book, yeah. right? The Flash is, I mean, say what but you want. But I'm saying, but he also has to play the PR. Yep. He is now the face of the company. He has to say it's good. I want to. I, I, Quick, you can't I be like, like eh, you know, it's, it's it's fine. I feel like the confusion around Blue Beetle. Listen, movies are movies, and it's <laughs> yeah. a movie. Almost feels purposeful, in case it is good, and they probably. Say, yep, he's part of it, and if it bombs and nobody watches it, yep, he was never part of it. That's what we were met. Like, I feel yeah. like that's kind of. Yeah, like, that's my thing. Is like the Blue Beetle. Like, they're not committing. I don't. I don't. Yeah, for them to be like, oh, it's the character. Like. I would imagine it's some kind of contract thing that they're trying to, and it's yeah. also the why not if we're launching it right there, do it. And it's like, I, in Superman Legacy, it's not like yeah. Superman's gonna be in it over his head and the fucking Blue Beetle's gonna show up to help him, I, right? Like maybe he flies by and helps the Blue Beetle do something, so you can be like, oh, that's cool. Like, I, don't even, I don't even mean this as a knock, but I think it almost would do better if you didn't say D, uh, Blue Beetle was a DC movie, just to like avoid, like here's Blue Beetle, it's it's a cool sci-fi action movie, go see it and not be like, well, you know, well here's DC and we gotta explain the con like no, just have it be its own thing. Like when is that out? That's out like what next month? August. Jesus oh, Christ! Yeah. I'll always have hope with the fact that they canceled Batgirl, Batgirl because that feels like if Blue Beetle's still happening, I feel like that could have easily been canceled as well. If maybe it didn't meet the quality standards that they now have. But wasn't the Batgirl thing tied up because thing. it got put? Yeah, well, yeah, but it, but it was a streaming thing, right? It was so like Max. It was a Max of Blue Beetle. Yeah. Oh, I thought was... it was mainly because of also like a. a Quality thing. Uh, well, well, they, they say said it's they quality, were, they, they but I think that I, I my DC has put out such dog shit, you know, that we've all had to go watch and do whatever. I really, I can't fathom this being that bad. And I'm, I don't know. I didn't see it. Obviously, you know, I could totally be wrong. You got Michael fucking Keaton in it again, being Batman. Yeah. And again, Grant says like two scenes or whatever. I've read yada yada. I don't give a shit. I would have shown up to watch that and been like whatever. But it's like I think the tax write off has more to do with it being a streaming thing that you could cancel and get yeah. money back, whereas a movie you can't. I, Again, I'm talking out my ass. No, you're right. I don't think it's you can cancel the movie. And get I mean, it's also the directors quality. who made, like, I would arguably, like, the two best episodes of Miss Marvel, which was the first two. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, it had a vision, had a great tone. Yeah. So, like, Batgirl probably wasn't going to be, like, the worst thing they've ever done. Sure, sure. It just sure. seemed like it was more bad, of a bad boys for life, right? Which I think you guys said was pretty good. Yeah, right. totally. I saw a uh, tweet uh, yesterday that said, Blue Beetle tracking at the box office to hit $38. Yeah. I saw that. <laughs> I was like, oh, no, good. we can't do It's going to make 12 bucks because I'm going to go see it. <laughs> yeah. But the word on the street is that Blue Beetle is like actually pretty fun. But the problem is, this goes back to what I was saying, there's just so much of this that people's expectations going in are so varied that yeah. you're going to piss off so many people no matter what. This feels what. like it's going to be a Bumblebee situation. I, I 100% I think this could be Bumblebee. How do, we, how do we find that? Okay. Family movie. Yeah. This is it, the, the point of this is it's a family superhero movie. And not just in terms of like the content of the movie, but like in terms of the intended audience and like yeah. obviously they're leaning hard into the the like Blue Beetles uh, culture and all, all that mm -hmm. stuff and uh, with getting Zolo who's fucking awesome in Cobra Kai like trying to, like Cobra Kai is like one of those pop culture moments that like yeah kids love this shit mm -hmm. us too but it's like getting him at this point he could be a star if they play things the right way is getting George Beetle? Lopez to get the older yeah. people in mm -hmm. too like there's so much going on that I feel like Blue Beetle could hit but here's the problem hit compared to what Compared to a DC, uh, compared to a superhero movie, fuck no, definitely not. But like, it could hit for what it's trying to do. It's just trying to do ten different things at once in a very complicated movie landscape. Does I don't even know four hundred million. I don't even know if it's trying no. to do. I think it's people are asking it to do ten different things, mm -hmm. and that's not oh, yeah. its own fault, but just because of where it's living in this linchpin of two different things. Whereas I think like Aquaman's gonna have the same problem, but everyone's already expects Aquaman to be bad. It's not gonna have that expectation. Whereas Blue oh, Beetles yeah. a new can you think? I, so people are gonna be like, okay, well, you can you deliver? Because we don't expect Aquaman to deliver. Well, I, I'm very excited for Aquaman. I think Aquaman too is delivers above and beyond Blue Beetle. You think so? Oh yeah. Ooh, I think you're alone. I think Blue Beetle is a better movie than Aquaman too. I, and I, I don't Michael know. I, I'm not saying I'm not saying I'm sorry, not deliver. I mean I meant box office return. I was saying Michael Keane can't d delivers Flash being the worst do doing DC movie ever. I don't know how well Aquaman is going to live on its own. I think based on, I mean, I, I, I love Momoa. I don't think Momoa can bring that. The namesake of Blue Beetle, which is in, which sure. I think in pop culture is not huge, right? And Zolo, we love Zolo, but what, what else is he from? Um, yeah, this is Cobra Kai. 
right? And and the fact that the the trailer and again, no disrespect at all, but the trailer kind of looks like it is a Netflix original movie. I don't think it looks like a like a four hundred million or two hundred fifty million dollar movie. I think a lot of people are going to look at this and go, "I will wait for this to stream." Yeah, but you don't have oh Aquaman two. I didn't like Aquaman one. Hmm, I don't want to go see that. But I think Aquaman one was fun, and I think yeah. Jason Momoa is still very much in yeah. the cultural zeitgeist. He's coming hot off the heels of Fast Ten. Yeah. He's just uh, he's he's ascended in my brain to just being Jason Momoa now. Who's at the end of the just flash? like The Rock? He was at the end of the Flash, <laughs> which is just a banger of a <laughs> most credit <laughs> sequence. I think well, I mean, I'll have to wait and see, but I feel like they're, that movie is going to feel like a bigger movie. That, that I think movie's going to feel like yeah. a, a blockbuster. Yes, it was yeah. the same the original Aquaman did, and the original yeah. Aquaman did numbers. I don't remember. I remember. Over a billion. Yeah, yes. it's, and it was which is insane. insane. Like, but it was DC movies don't hit that. I saw yeah. it twice in theaters. <laughs> <laughs> and, but, I mean, again, it, Aquaman, not my favorite superhero yeah, movie. It's blast! It's a blast. With dumb two fun. and a half hours. Yeah, and Jason Momoa. Yeah. Fun to watch for two hours, just having a good time being Aquaman, yeah, owning that role. I'm not the guy who watched C for three seasons. I, I, I'll, I'll go see <laughs> Memoir. That's but bold. Like, <laughs> you oh, were a big Memoir C's incredible. C is incredible. I'll never know. I'm, I'm still in suits. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a different S. Um, <laughs> yeah, they both start with S. Yeah, I just don't know coming off of Aquaman 1 if people are going to be like, oh, yeah, let's go see, let's go rush to see Aquaman I, 2, especially after The Flash. I think when is, go, when is Aquaman Especially 2? after Shazam. Like, The yeah. Flash is like we're the easiest thing to talk about because yeah. it is The Flash. Nick, like, I don't know if you saw the updated stuff. It is now, like, as of a couple days ago, going down as the biggest bomb in history. Really? Like, yeah. Above no. John Carter from Mars. Oh, above John Carter Below, was so good. However you want to talk about it. Green Hornet. Like, all those movies that, like, Green we like always refer to. Like the Flash is now yeah. the new, like, yo, this they they dropped the ball. And it had Michael Ke- It had yeah. the whole Justice League and Michael Keaton and all these promised cameos and stuff. And that's what happened. And then you look back uh, to Shazam 2, an- another one of the biggest bombs uh, yeah. this year for sure. What a terrible but movie. Terrible movie. It's like, that's just where we're at here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Having said that. Aquaman 1 did cross a billion. Yeah. It's coming in December. Yeah, I was going to say, when does Aquaman movies? 2 come out? Christmas, I think. So I th- that's that's a good window yeah, of, we for that. I haven't heard movie. a single thing about that. it, though. Yeah. Blue Beetle kind of has a nice runway right now. It's Turtles and Blue Beetle. Yeah, there's nothing. There's, there's nothing. But, dude, We're done after July. But it's banger after banger after banger after banger. I mean, there's been, there has not been a week in the last like two months where a massive fucking movie hasn't mm-hmm. come out. So I think they're really smart pushing Aquaman as far out as possible. Well, also, just, I, I also feel I like think Aquaman oh, had yeah. production problems. Had a lot of production problems. Because you had the whole like Amber Heard, yeah, that Amber Heard thing. thing. I think like yeah. rumors of like reshooting all of her stuff. Like I think that movie was just in production hell. And got yeah, I gotta watch COVID. how Starfield Again. coming out. Um, yeah, <laughs> I'm not saying I'm not saying that I'm super stoked for sure, Aquaman. Yeah. But when I think of the two things of like what would I rather be seeing right now, uh, neither. But. I don't know. I was I I what I didn't hate Aquaman one as much as I probably should have being me. I mean I'm with you. I watched it, I was like, this is it blast. was a little too long and the third act I was like, that's a lot of crap. I put it in like the top fifty percent of the DC EU movies. I, I might I might also. It was like, fun. Like, I'd rather watch that than a lot of the way over serious. But I'm also I, it's one of those things as where a, I'm like I'm saying, as like someone who likes the Snyder movies. <laughs> like I'm I'm totally like Snyder and then Aquaman for me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean and this this is gonna be a dumb comment coming out of my mouth. I just I love Jason Mama. I follow him on Instagram. The man looks like he's having a great time in life, and I mean, that hopefully will translate. How's that a dumb comment? That's that's what a movie that's star reality. is. Yeah, that's, movie, but that's what that's yeah, and yeah. The, movie stars are in blockbuster pictures, and that's what this is. That's what the first one was, and that's what I think this one will be as well. I mean, I see him out there just hanging out, yeah. shirt off, yeah. just hanging out with celebrities, sure. partying on the beach. He uses like, motorcycles a bunch. He loves the motorcycles. Yeah. He loves jujitsu, I think, because he's always hanging out with Gordon Ryan, which is weird. Cool. Which is crazy, but yeah, he's just like he's, the man looks like he has a zest for life. We're back to it, right? We're both yeah, we're Blue Beetle and Aquaman are up next. And I just want to punch a fucking chair. Like, what the fuck? Why are, <laughs> are these doing? the movies that yeah. are happening still? You know what I mean? But even and that's then, why though, back like, to the authority class. thing, where it's like, I wish James Gunn was like, listen, here's your Batman movie, your Wonder Woman movie, your What's Superman movie. We're starting there, we're going there. The Authority was an early uh, 2000s Wildstorm, which is a DC imprint comic, and it's kind of like it's before it, it, it's like the boys, but like. But more mainstream of like, well, this is like a superhero, but like a superhero uh, Justice League analog, but like a much more serious world. Like Watchmen or something? Yeah, but like, but like not a meta commentary. It's just like, just gritty. Know. Yeah, it was, well, like they kind of tackled like bigger things of like the second arc is like an alien species comes back to Earth, but like for all intents and purposes, it is God and it's coming mm. to kill all of the humans that are infesting its planet. And so, like, how do these superheroes go kill God kind of thing? So it's like, that heroes. sounds awesome. You won't know any of them. Okay. They were all like analogy makeups, which is why I think like I think Authority is a 
awesome idea. I have no idea why you would put that in like your phase one. Yeah, like that is an maybe insane. The, but maybe that's I don't the know. cartoon, right? No, that's live. Oh, no, the, the cartoon is uh, it's like the, the, yeah, it's like the monster commando. Could you Island? See, that's and I mean, like, this is coming from thing? the DC guy who first... saw this list and just glazed over at several of them. Like, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. The, You'll make me care, James. I'm sure you will. Dude, but I, I mean, I bet you they're in the movie. Like, I, there's been talking. Like, I bet the the authority is in Superman Legacy. Yeah. Like, there. Yeah, James is- Gunn's gonna build this shit around the authority because he's James Gunn, man. He create he cares about characters and like he has to get these characters right. He gets to create these other ones essentially. Yeah. I mean, the authority is basically what the Guardians of the Galaxy was for Phase Two, and that's what's oh, exciting for me, right? Is I had no obviously I'm the least comic book guy in this office. Guardians of the Galaxy is like who the fuck are these people? Mm-hmm. And now they're one of the most beloved you know franchises to me in the MCU, which is insane. What? It's, it's, it's like the Guardians like has like that much of a cultural name. It's bonkers, yeah. right? Yeah. But that that just speaks volumes to like the storytellers, yeah. the actors, everyone that's bringing it. and that and that's what this could be for me. That's why I'm I'm again I, I'm so cheap and easy. It, it it seems like this whole push is new. I don't know who these people are, and that's exciting to me. Mm-hmm. Granted, I didn't really know who Blue Beetle was until I think I watched Ultimate Spider Man because I think he was in that. Nope, he's no, in a different he's, universe. That's a different universe. No, no, no. I'm sorry, not Blue yeah. Beetle. Uh, Young Justice. That's what I meant to say. Yeah. Um, I knew of him because of Injustice. <laughs> Cool, yeah, cool in that, but been a you know, big push for Jaime with DC. Yeah, yeah. Last ten years, yeah, makes sense. Yeah, yeah it's they're, they're, it, again. There's no winning because it's either oh we know we've seen them too many times or who the fuck are these guys? Like we're just caught. In it. We just need the quality to start coming. To Greg, to your point about the DC of like I just want Batman and, and Superman and all this stuff. You look at the MCU and it's like it's tough right now where it's like this lineup of movies ahead of us. Like I'm not excited about any of them. Like I'm me. So like, I, I, I still am excited, but like, I'm not like so damn stoked. Like I'm more stoked for the next Spider-Man movie than I am for pretty much anything announced. Which and we don't even know when the fuck. Yeah. Which Spider-Man happen. movie. Um, He's just saying, well, I the mean, next Spider-Man movie. Yeah, which uh, one? What's that? What's that? Oh, definitely that. Uh, definitely that. Bro, but I mean, no, whatever Tom Holland, the next the MCU Spider-Man. Yeah. <laughs> but see, that's another thing. It's just like, the the pl- the timing of everything coming out the way it is is not doing any favors to these fucking shows. The amount of I didn't bring this up in my rant earlier, but the amount of uh, allegations of sexual misconduct yeah. and like being bad people and all this shit. Like we're in such a aware time period from every point of view, whether it's like the trailers are showing the whole movie or yeah. we are all invested in these people's lives on and off camera and like who's being casted, who's doing what to who, whatever. It's like, everything's fucked, man. Like mm-hmm. there's no way that this can make sense. There's too much money, too many people involved, too much ask from people to be invested in every single thing. And if they're not asking for people to be invested in every single thing, putting things out, it's always going to feel lesser than because the shows, if they know people aren't watching them, nothing eventful is going to happen. And yeah. that's how we mm-hmm. get, the fucking CW Flash shows or the DC shows or like any of the other countless animated properties that we've had that aren't the DC. Holy shit, yo, these are like canonically the shit where it's like, how the fuck is Marvel still not pulled off animated stuff? Yeah, that's wild. It's absolutely wild. We get some winners with Spider Man every once in a while, yeah. but overall, like, how is there not just a slate of banger Marvel animation? Just And they're trying to get it going on the MCU side with zombies coming out, the X-Men 97 and all that stuff. But, like, it's just wild to me that this is where we're at, and there's so many reasons why, and it all makes sense. But here's a group of people here that fucking love these this shit so much that it is our job to care and talk about all this stuff. And I'm the only person, I don't know about you, Chris, but I'm the only person here that's even watched a single episode of Secret, Secret Invasion. Invasion. Yeah. The have- Nick, oh, good shit. The mm. Nick Fury show. Samuel L. Jackson as Nick Fury yeah. with Don Cheadle as Rhodey is in a fucking show amongst others. And, and like, you're gonna, you guys are going to watch it for in review. Right. But you guys are going to watch it for in review. Well, uh, yes, that's true. You're, you're not wrong. It's not that we don't, and to be fair, to clarify, it's not that we don't want to watch it. But you're right. It's just there's so many seasons of suits left mm-hmm. <laughs> no i mean like, like we so always stuff to want we yeah. always talk about it like you know you're it's the like, same thing with video games or movies or tv shows it's not that they're competing against the other blockbuster movie you're competing against everything else that you have to do in your life and so yeah like you know at the end of the day jen and i descend downstairs to play diablo right and then it what we finally started making time for the bear because we're like we got to get back we love the bear so adore good. the bear we Finish gotta it. get to the bear no we're about to go to the seven fishes episode the first uh, one oh, I, I know okay. i know i know well it's like you know whatever it doesn't matter yeah. Shh. uh we're gonna watch that right and then it's but then it's yeah secret invasion is stacked up and it's like i wish i was watching it but with the you know the amount of time i have free it's just falling off because no one has come in and been like dude 
Mm-hmm. Holy, I, I've wor- it's, I've heard way more. Holy shit, the bear! Did the you bear. watch that episode yet? And I'm like, no, no, I haven't yet, buddy. So, so it's like I th- feel like it can cook. And that's cook an and issue. Cook. That's an interesting perspective. So you're just saying like actually make the shows better. Yeah. <laughs> Secret yeah, Nation's good. That's what you're saying. It's good, but it's not but the it bear. Be no, it's not the fucking bear. It's nowhere close to the bear. But it at should all. be. And why isn't? Yeah, it? that's it. the question. Well, it's because they do too many things. It, it, there's, there's just too much, and they can't put their time into it. Well, is it that, or yeah, is we it that? We raved about Andor, and you didn't watch it. You haven't watched Suits yet. You're going to watch nine seasons of Suits. No, I mean, it's true. Yeah. And, and Andor is on my list. I've got a bunch of stuff on my list. I've got multiple games to play. I've got this. I've got that. There's, there's a lot. We, we have a, a tremendous amount of... <laughs> somebody <laughs> say. Uh, <laughs> you know, there is, there is a limited amount of time when I go home at night. And so I go, what am I going to spend a couple hours doing? Granted, I, I watch Suits mostly just to turn yeah, my brain off. You want to do that. And you're choosing to do that over I am. this. That's not. But no I did watch that. The Bear because The Bear to me is like, I don't want this spoiled for me. Mm-hmm. I know this is going to be a yep. great experience. I know this is going to be an experience that my wife and I can enjoy together. There are there are episodes in, in The Bear that are standalone, some of the best episodes of anything I've ever watched in my life. And they're so simple. And they're so beautiful and different and unique. And that is what I look for when I really want to invest my time in something. Secret Invasion, it looks like it's going to be fine. But there's so many things out there that are just fine, that I'm just tired of fine. I, I almost want everything to be terrible or great. But there's this massive middle ground of stuff that pretty much everything now is fitting into that's just kind of wearing me out. Yeah, and I mean, it sucks for me because I want to stay up till midnight and watch these things, and then I want to watch them the next day with Gia because she's invested in whatever. Mm-hmm. She's still invested. She still wants to watch all this shit and like wants to be there. What's she watching now? Uh, she's watching Suits now, Nick. Uh, she watches many, many things. But um, <laughs> I mean, she's watching Secret Invasion with me every week, but I'm not watching Midnight. I'm waking up the next morning and watching mm-hmm. it with her. I'm like, I don't want to watch this again. Yeah, well, I, watched, and, like, I watched the first crazy, episode dude. of Midnight. Yeah. And then that opening hit, and I was like, oh, no. Oh, is this no. AI? Yeah, I was looking. I'm like, it's an interesting idea that you're trying to make this look like AI. Like, I get it in terms of like shape, shape, shape thing. And then something like this morning, you're like, no, it was AI. I'm like, oh, God, yeah. It was the one show I was excited about. No, dude. I mean, that's, I, honestly, I, I talked about this one. on our our screencast breakdown. It's like they shot themselves in the foot with all this ill will, like ill speak about MCU, the the levels of hype of am I in, am I not? Cool. Yeah. Let's fucking have the one promoted piece of marketing for this yeah. movie be something that unanimously people are pissed about. Come on. Like now man. I'm terrified because the only thing of the MCU that I'm really excited about is Daredevil. And I'm just terrified yeah. that some something's gonna happen. Something is gonna like Charlie Cox is gonna murder a man before like the, the show premieres. <laughs> like, God damn it. Yeah. As a flip of it, like, you know, the even though you're joking around about it uh, at the beginning of the show when we were talking about it, like the my adventures uh with Superman, like that is for me like I made a point to watch that, right? Yeah. And it was the hurdles of HBO Max that stopped me from watching it the day it dropped or whatever. Uh but it's destination for me every week now interesting like i thought that the first two episodes were so strong i love the low stakes anime look to it sure it's that it's the anime look but it is also fresh right yeah it is you know clark lois and jimmy are interns awesome i love that idea you know what i mean this is a superman who is the embodiment of that christopher reeve interview of he's a friend you try an mcu show like like, i know what i'm gonna get yeah you're like i'm not gonna get a new flavor out of this it's like as much as i was excited about you know secret invasion because i like the spy stuff out of marvel like it's gonna be cap 2 feeling but a little more dull okay and that's not exactly what it was and like i'm enjoying this but i'm not nothing about this surprised me you know but like it, we're not getting enough of that out there and what sucks about it though and and like god i i'm i'm trying really hard to not spoil say too much all. because i well I'm definitely not gonna spoil anything but like i don't i don't even want to like get into your guys's heads about how to think about the show because sure. i want you guys to watch it and like sure. let's have a conversation and review because like the last thing i want to do is overhype this but I do think that Secret Invasion is being dramatically underhyped. Like, yeah. I think the show is good. It's not fine. It's yeah. good. It's not amazing, but it's good. It's not Andor, but it's way closer to Andor than I ever expected a, a Marvel show to be. Like, it's there's so much there where, like, I would say it's closer to Winter Soldier. It's not Winter Soldier. Yeah, uh, you need to make these be. caveats. But again, yeah. we're only making these caveats because we've seen 300 of these movies and yeah. we're able to say, I wish it was more like this and less like this and See, this and this and this. We're just so, we know it. We, we're writing the movies, but we think better in our heads and shows as we're watching them. Of oh, They should have done this. They should have done this. But it's like, what they're actually doing, I'm like, this is actually really fucking good. And all the shit we've talked about, about it being street level or world level or universe level. Yeah. Secret Invasion is fucking crushing it. They are nailing it. Yeah. But there's also this thing of like, but when they, when is, when's this person showing up? When's that person showing yeah. up? Can this person show up? There's no getting away from that. And See, that takes it down. I feel like 
again, once I miss that first episode, it kind of becomes like a video game I don't review, right? Where it's like, okay, now I might as well let them stack up because I feel like if we get to an episode where people are like, that fucking ending, holy... I'm like, oh, okay. And I'm going to go through four of them, right? And be like, get to that fucking ending. Be like, oh, yeah, great. Yeah. I got here quicker. Yeah. Then going week by week and being like, all right, you know, what yeah. happened in the week one? Like, I think for me personally, it'll be a better in-review. Me being able to sit there and watch them all the way through as with like... With, with all the episodic mm-hmm. MCUs, you know, when I did the plot, I had to have a Wikipedia open because I... I like the I like Miss Marvel a lot. I had a great time with it. I'm gonna struggle to tell you after episode nine what happened in episode two in a way that makes sense. I was just gonna say, like, it's also kind of an issue, like if you're waiting, then like people immediately leak everything. Yeah. Which also takes a lot of the wind out of the silks. You can't just enjoy the show for And that's my thing show, where I, again like, cool. you know, when we did WandaVision, when we did Loki, like those were I woke up and didn't look at anything. Jen and I went downstairs. We watched it, and then we would react hours later. And it was that everybody was spoiling everything. Yeah. And so Secret Invasion, after episode one dropped, it was a little bit of this where it's like, oh, okay, okay, I'm safe. Like, it, it, this isn't a, everyone's coming and bringing the heat. My algorithm on TikTok is still showing me end credits for The Flash rather than anything from Secret Invasion. And that's, you know, I know I'm, it's a dangerous game that I could fuck up as soon as they do an episode that is I mean, look, that the, fucking end. There's ending. a ton of spoilers in the show. Yeah. A ton of them. It's just at this point, nobody gives a fuck about spoilers because we're so used to being spoiled all the time about yeah. everything. Mm-hmm. Like, that's the thing is, like, I, I, Andy, me and you always talk about this about like the prestige shows of like the cliffhanger type endings. It's like, yeah. that's the best thing. I want more. Secret Invasion has a cliffhanger every episode. Yeah. And like, so far, I love the level of stakes that they have where I'm like, oh shit, I want to see where this goes. And then they answer the question the next episode. I'm like, cool. Yeah. Thank you. This is great. That's also saying, like, people are also massively hyperbolic about it. I know what happened with the last episode, and it, but then everyone's like losing their mind, and like you know it's a show, like you know that like, that's not going to be the thing. Like why? Like you spend a week throwing a tantrum over this, because but like you know how this all works. Just play for the next episode, but we can't. And like I think that also like burns a lot of people because the people like write an overabundance of articles of like oh my god, can you believe this thing? And it's like next episode is going to happen, and no one's going to care about that, and. Why would you have this? Like, why do we light a fire for this? You know? Yeah. And it just gets kind of tiring. Of like, you can't just let anything just be and have everyone have, can have fun. You know? I even remember like, I don't know, I guess for me it was like with WandaVision and Loki. It's like I don't really remember too many people like really talking about it week to week. So it was like, oh, cool, that was a fun episode. Let's wait till next week. And like that was kind of it. And that WandaVision felt, Loki. Yeah, for at least from in my WandaVision in our I, I circles, feel like all WandaVision in particular. That, like, I think I think because I'm all minor like comic creatives, no one gives a shit. Yeah, <laughs> like oh, that was fun. They stole my design. I hate yeah. it. Yeah, no, Wand- WandaVision, I would say was an equal fervor to Endgame in a different way. Really? Yeah, because it was the first thing back. Oh. It was the first show. Yeah, there was the, the mystery element of it. There was like right. the decades. There was so much intrigue and interest, and it was fantastic for so long week to week that yeah. like and they delivered they delivered yeah. so much and then they like kind of i think those the things like, i think most of my friends didn't either didn't care didn't watch it because like i really like the first episodes of like i like the like the week to week show by show generation by generation and then the more they kind of got to like the sword i was like i just don't care <laughs> go back and give me the dick van dyke show again <laughs> like, that was so <laughs> nice it's such a nice like style execution yeah and like a just a ponderance of television throughout yep. you know the decades like this is really nice and then just every time we kind of get, get back to like, oh, but what happened with Sword? And I'm like, I just don't give a shit. Yeah. No. It, not, nothing's going to ever like come from this. I'm like, cool. I mean, oh, the mystery was so good week to week, though. Remember they pulled back and started watching it? So they were watching it. It's crazy. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for watching us. This, of course, has been the Kind of Funny Podcast each and every week for sometimes five best friends gather on this table. Each coming to hang out with each other and talk about whatever we want to talk about. If you want to talk with us, head on over to kindoffunny.com slash KF Podcast, where you can write in, get your questions and topics read on the air. Then watch live on patreon.com slash kindoffunny as we record the show ad free a whole day before it posts anywhere else. Of course, on patreon.com slash kindoffunny, you can watch all the other podcasts live as they record ad free. You, of course, can get dozens and dozens and hundreds of exclusive episodes of programming like Kind of Feudy and Gregway. And of course, you get some physical good as well only on patreon.com slash kind of funny help keep us independent and have the lights and mics on if you have no bucks toss our way no big deal youtube.com slash kind of funny and podcast services around the globe each and every week for a brand spanking new episode chris anka we love you thank you for being such a great supporter of us thanks for wasting your time with us all the time Mm -hmm. whether it be on stream hanging out or just watching the content where should people keep up with you uh twitter and instagram at chris anka okay Keep it simple. 
Easy. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, until next time, it's been our pleasure to serve you.